Let's talk about a man who one day decided to take a walk in the woods. Now, this wasn't just any walk, and these weren't just any woods. This man, let's call him Mike, had been at a crossroads in his life, much like many of us find ourselves. Mike's walk was more than a stroll. It was a quest for clarity. He had been running the same race on the same track, day in and day out, wondering why he wasn't getting anywhere different, anything better. It's funny, isn't it? How sometimes it takes getting lost to truly find our way. So there Mike was, wandering, when suddenly he stumbled upon a clearing he'd never seen before. It was as if this clearing had been waiting for Mike, patiently, for him to find it when he most needed a new perspective. In that moment, standing at the edge of something new, Mike realized that the path to success, to change, wasn't about finding a new forest. It was about seeing the woods he'd been walking through with fresh eyes. That day, Mike made a decision a decision to reset his mind for success. Now, why start with Mike's story? Because it's a lot like my own. My journey wasn't in the woods, but it involved a similar moment of realization. There was a time when I was going through the motions, living by the day's demands, reacting to life rather than directing it. I, too, needed to find my clearing in the woods to see my world differently. Resetting your mind for success isn't about changing where you are. It's about changing how you see where you are. It's about saying to yourself, I might have taken this path a hundred times, but what if today I notice what I never saw before? What if today I make a different choice? For me, the change came from a shift in perspective. I started to look at my daily routines, my habits, and my attitudes. I asked myself what habits are serving me and which ones are holding me back. It wasn't an overnight transformation. No, it was a series of small decisions, small resets that gradually reshaped my path. The first step in resetting your mind is to acknowledge that you have the power to change your course. It's to recognize that while you may not control everything that happens to you, you absolutely control how you respond. This realization was my clearing in the woods. It was my moment of understanding that success, growth, and happiness were not just destinations to reach, but journeys to be enjoyed and learned from. So how do you begin to reset your mind for success? Start with gratitude. Every morning, I would wake up and think of three things I was grateful for. It sounds simple, but this act of recognizing the good even on bad days started to change my outlook. Next, I focused on learning. I read books, listened to tapes, sought mentors. I became a student of life, hungry for knowledge, eager to apply what I learned. It's amazing how much wisdom is out there waiting for us to seek it out. And finally, I embrace discipline. Success isn't a product of what you do occasionally, but what you do consistently. Discipline became my foundation. Whether it was dedicating time to write, to plan, to reflect, or to connect with others, it was discipline that transformed my good intentions into tangible results. As we walk through today's conversation, remember Mike in the woods and remember my journey too. We all have our forests to navigate, our paths to choose. The power to reset our minds for success lies within each decision we make. It's in the willingness to see the familiar with new eyes, to challenge ourselves to grow, to learn, and to become the architects of our own destiny. Let's take that first step together. Let's take a moment to consider the landscape of our minds. For many of us, it's like a garden that's been left untended. Weeds of doubt, fear, and procrastination have taken root, choking the life out of the dreams and ambitions we once planted with hope and enthusiasm. It's a common place to find oneself, standing in a garden, overrun with the thorns of past failures and the brambles of insecurity. These mental barriers are the culprits behind halted progress and unfulfilled potential. Now think about this. Every thought, belief, an emotion we experience is a seed that takes root in the garden of our mind. The thoughts we water, the beliefs we nurture, and the emotions we give light to will determine the landscape of our lives. It's a simple truth, yet one so easily forgotten amidst the noise and haste of daily living. Our minds, you see, are fertile ground 
rich with the potential to cultivate an abundance of success and happiness. But just as a gardener must tend to their soil, planting seeds with care and diligence, so must we tend to the gardens of our minds. It begins with uprooting the weeds of negative thinking and planting in their place, seeds of positivity, resilience, and determination. Consider for a moment the power of a single positive thought, a single seed planted in fertile soil, given attention and care, it can grow into a towering tree providing shade and shelter. Similarly, a single positive thought can grow into a mindset that shelters us from the storms of doubt and fear. But here's where many of us stumble. We scatter seeds haphazardly, allowing both positive and negative thoughts to take root without discrimination. We water the garden with our focus, often unknowingly nurturing the very thoughts that work against us. It's time to become intentional gardeners of our minds, choosing with care the seeds we plant watering them with purpose, and basking in the sunshine of positive action. To do this, we must first clear the ground, removing the weeds of past regrets and the rocks of stubborn, limiting beliefs. It requires effort, yes, and persistence. But the rewards, oh, the rewards are boundless. A mind cleared of debris is a mind ready to grow wonders. So how do we begin this process of mental cultivation? It starts with awareness becoming mindful of the thoughts we entertain and the beliefs we hold. It continues with choice, the deliberate decision to foster thoughts that align with our deepest values and highest aspirations. And it is sustained by action, the daily practice of nurturing our positive thoughts into As we move forward, let's embrace the role of diligent gardeners, tending to the landscapes of our minds with the same care and attention as we would a precious garden, Let's plant seeds of ambition, water them with perseverance, and cultivate a life of success and fulfillment. The mind's landscape is ours to shape. Let's create a garden that reflects the beauty of our highest potential, a testament to the power of intentional thought and action. Together, let's watch as our gardens and our lives flourish beyond our wildest dreams. Let's take a moment to consider the landscape of our minds. For many of us, it's like a garden it's been left untended. Weeds of doubt, fear, and procrastination have taken root, choking the life out of the dreams and ambitions we once planted with hope and enthusiasm. It's a common place to find oneself, standing in a garden overrun with the thorns of past failures and the brambles of insecurity. These mental barriers are the culprits behind halted progress and unfulfilled potential. Now think about this. Every thought, belief, an emotion we experience is a seed that takes root in the garden of our mind. The thoughts we water, the beliefs we nurture, and the emotions we give light to will determine the landscape of our lives. It's a simple truth, yet one so easily forgotten amidst the noise and haste of daily living. Our minds, you see, are fertile ground, rich with the potential to cultivate an abundance of success and happiness. But just as a gardener must tend to their soil, planting seeds with care and diligence, so must we tend to the gardens of our mind. It begins with uprooting the weeds of negative thinking and planting. In their place, seeds of positivity, resilience, and determination. Consider for a moment the power of a single positive thought, a single seed. Planted in fertile soil, given attention and care, it can grow into a towering tree, providing shade and shelter. Similarly, a single positive thought can grow into a mindset that shelters us from the storms of doubt and fear. But here's where many of us stumble. We scatter seeds haphazardly, allowing both positive and negative thoughts to take root without discrimination. We water the garden with our focus, often unknowingly nurturing the very thoughts that work against us. It's time to become intentional gardeners of our minds, choosing with care the seeds we plant watering them with purpose, and basking in the sunshine of positive action. To do this, we must first clear the ground, removing the weeds of past regrets and the rocks of stubborn, limiting beliefs. It requires effort, yes, and persistence. But the rewards, oh, the rewards are boundless. A mind cleared of debris is a mind ready to grow wonders.
So how do we begin this process of mental cultivation? It starts with awareness, becoming mindful of the thoughts we entertain and the beliefs we hold. It continues with choice, the deliberate decision to foster thoughts that align with our deepest values and highest aspirations. And it is sustained by action. The daily practice of nurturing our positive thoughts into tangible GP. In the grand tapestry of life, one principle stands as a cornerstone, the philosophy of change. It's a simple yet profound truth that the only constant in life is change itself. Yet how many of us truly embrace this notion? How many of us build our personal philosophies around the acceptance and more importantly, the celebration of change? Developing a personal philosophy that not only accepts but also embraces growth and change is akin to setting the sails on a ship. Without sails, the ship is merely adrift, subject to the whims of the sea. But with sails set towards change, we harness the winds of life, steering towards our desired destination. It's about recognizing that we are the captains of our ships, the architects of our destinies, our beliefs and values, the very bedrock of our personal philosophy, shape our reality and future prospects more than we could ever imagine. Think of them as the compass by which we navigate the vast oceans of life. If our compass is fixed solely on resisting change, fearing the unknown, we circle in familiar waters, never daring to explore beyond the horizon. However, if our compass embraces change, sees it as an opportunity for growth, the whole world opens up to us. Consider for a moment the mighty oak tree. It begins as a small acorn, seemingly insignificant. Yet within that acorn lies the potential for great growth. But growth requires change, transformation. The acorn must cease to be an acorn to become the mighty oak. So it is with us. Our greatest potential is realized when we allow ourselves to embrace the changes that life brings, to grow beyond our current conflict. Yet, embracing change is not merely about acknowledging it. It's about actively seeking it out, understanding that every experience, every challenge is an opportunity to learn, to expand, to become more than we were. This doesn't mean recklessly throwing caution to the wind. Rather, it means carefully considering our path, our values, and making deliberate choices that align with our vision for the future. Our beliefs and values are not static. They evolve as we do. The key is to remain conscious of this evolution, to question, to reflect, and to adjust as necessary. It's about building a personal philosophy that is both a foundation and a sail, grounding us while propelling us forward. So how do we cultivate such a philosophy? It begins with self-awareness, with taking the time to understand our core values and beliefs, it involves setting aside moments for reflection, asking ourselves tough questions about who we are and who we want to be. It's about being honest with ourselves, recognizing our strengths and confronting our weaknesses. From this place of understanding, we then take action. We set goals that challenge us, that push us out of our comfort zones. We seek experiences that broaden our horizons, that introduce us to new ideas, new ways of thinking. We build relationships with those who inspire us, who encourage us to grow. In essence, developing a personal philosophy that embraces growth and change is about making a commitment to ourselves. It's a commitment to never stop exploring, to never stop growing, to never stop growing. It's about recognizing that the journey of self-discovery and personal development is ongoing, that there is always another layer to uncover. Another lesson to learn. In the quest for success, there's one ally we, we all possess, but often overlook our attitude. It's the silent partner in every endeavor, the one factor that can transform obstacles into stepping stones and failures into lessons. You see, the power of a success-oriented attitude is not just in navigating the smooth waters, but in how we sail through the storms. Let me share with you a story that perfectly illustrates this point. There was a young man named Tom who embarked on a business venture with enthusiasm and dreams as vast as the ocean. But like all voyages, his was met with storms. His first business failed, 
leaving him not just financially bankrupt, but emotionally depleted. Yet Tom had an unusual response to his situation. Instead of wallowing in despair, he asked himself, what can I learn from this? That question marked the turning point in his life. Tom's story isn't unique because he faced failure. Many of us do. It's remarkable because of his attitude towards that failure. He saw it not as a stop sign, but as a guidepost pointing him in a new direction. For each setback, he adjusted his sails, learned from his mistakes, and set out again. Today, Tom is a successful entrepreneur, not despite his failures, but because of them. His attitude transformed potential disasters into the foundations of his future success. This transformative power of a positive mindset isn't magic. It's about making a conscious choice. It's about deciding to see the opportunity in every challenge, the lesson in every setback. A success-oriented attitude doesn't ignore obstacles or pretend failures don't sting. Instead, it chooses to focus on the possibilities that each obstacle and failure presents. Consider for a moment the story of a seed. Buried in the dark soil, it faces the ultimate obstacle, a barrier of dirt above it and the darkness surrounding it. Yet within that seed lies the potential for growth. With the right amount of water and sunlight, it pushes through the soil, not around it. The obstacle becomes the path to sunlight, to growth, to life. We too have that potential within us. Our attitudes can be the water and sunlight we need to push through our obstacles to grow and to thrive. Cultivating a success-oriented attitude begins with awareness. It's recognizing when we're viewing our circumstances through a lens of negativity and choosing to shift our perspective. It's about asking ourselves, what's the opportunity here? Or what can I learn from this? Even when the answers aren't immediately clear, it also requires practice. Like any skill, a positive mindset becomes stronger the more we use it. We can practice gratitude, focusing on what we have rather than what we lack. We can practice resilience, standing up one more time than we fall. We can practice optimism, trusting in our ability to navigate through storms and reach our destination. Now let's talk about something practical, something you can do starting today that will begin the process of resetting your mind for success. You see, the mind is a bit like a garden. Yes, I've spoken about this before, but it bears repeating. Just as a garden requires constant care and attention, so does the landscape of your mind if you wish to cultivate success. First up, goal setting. Now, I'm not talking about those vague someday I'll kind of goals. I mean, clear, specific, written down goals. There's power in writing down what you want to achieve. It's like making a contract with yourself. It's easy to dismiss an idea floating around in your head, but once it's down on paper, it becomes real, tangible. Ask yourself, what do I want to achieve this year? In the next five years, Make your goals as clear as possible. I want to improve my health is a good start, but I will exercise for 30 minutes. Every day turns a wish into a plan. Next, let's talk about visualization. This isn't daydreaming. It's a focused, purposeful exercise. Picture yourself achieving your goals. See it, feel it, believe it. If your goal is to give powerful presentations, Visualize yourself standing confidently, speaking clearly, and receiving a round of applause. Your mind often can't tell the difference between vivid visualization and actual experience. By visualizing your success, you're priming your mind to act in ways that make that success a reality. Affirmations are another tool in our mental reset toolkit. These are positive, empowering statements that you repeat to yourself daily. They reinforce your goals and prime your mindset for success. For instance, if your goal is to become more confident in your professional life, had dreams, sure, but they were scattered. It wasn't until I started applying these practical steps, setting clear goals, visualizing my success, repeating affirmations, and sticking to my daily disciplines, that I began to see real change. It didn't happen overnight, but with time, the small steps added up to a big transformation. 
So what's the takeaway from all this? It's that resetting your mind for success is within your control. It starts with the practical steps you take every day. Set your goals, visualize your success, use affirmations to reinforce your mindset and commit to daily disciplines. These are the tools at your disposal, ready to be used. Start small if you need to, but start today. The path to resetting your mind for success isn't a sprint. It's a marathon, one step at a time. In navigating the waters of life, it's vital to consider the role of influence and association. Think of your mind as a garden. The people we spend time with, the media we consume, are like seeds being planted in the soil of our garden. Now, if you plant weeds, don't be surprised when they take over and choke out the flowers. It's the same with our minds. Surround yourself with negativity, with people who tell you it can't be done, with media that drains your energy and inspiration and you'll find those weeds taking root in your own mindset, stifling your growth and success. On the flip side, when you choose to surround yourself with positive influences, with people who uplift you and media that fuels your growth, you're planting flowers in that garden of your mind. These flowers will bloom, creating a landscape that's not only pleasing to the eye, but also invigorates your soul. The people around us, the books we read, the shows we watch, they all shape our worldview, our self-image, and our approach to life's challenges. Let's talk about mentors, for instance. A mentor is not just someone who teaches you directly. They can be authors of books you've never put down, speakers and videos you've replayed countless times, or even leaders of the past whose stories have inspired you. They are the gardeners who help you weed out the negative and cultivate the positive, guiding you and planting the seeds of success in your own life. I remember in my own life seeking out the wisdom of those who had walked the path before me. It wasn't just about their successes. It was their failures, their challenges, and how they overcame them that provided me with a roadmap. They didn't have all the answers, but they asked the right questions prompting me to think, to reflect, and ultimately to grow. Now, you might be wondering, how do I find these positive influences and mentors? Start by looking around you. Who are the people that inspire you, who challenge you to be better, to think bigger? They might be closer than you think. And in today's digital age, the world is at our fingertips. Find those authors, speakers, and thought leaders who resonate with you. Dive into their books, their podcasts, their videos. Let their words and their journeys influence your own. But remember, it's not just about consumption. It's about connection. Seek out communities, both in person and online, that align with your values and your goals. These communities can provide support, encouragement, and accountability as you navigate your own journey. In the fabric of life, each of us will face moments of adversity. It's not a question of if, but when. How we respond to these moments, how we harness the power of resilience is what truly defines us. Let me tell you a story that perfectly encapsulates this idea. A story about a young woman named Sarah. Sarah's dream was to become an athlete, not just any athlete, but an Olympian. From a young age, she dedicated herself to her sport, training tirelessly, sacrificing the ordinary pleasures of childhood for the extraordinary pursuit of her dream. However, life as it often does, threw a curveball her way. Just as she was on the cusp of achieving her dream, an injury sidelined her, not just for the season, but potentially forever. Doctors told her the odds of competing again, let alone at an Olympic level, were slim to none. Now this is where the story could end with a dream deferred, a spirit broken, but Sarah, like all great characters in the stories of resilience, chose a different ending. She refused to let the opinion of others define her reality. She embraced her adversity, not as a barrier, but as a challenge to overcome. Day by day, through pain and frustration, through doubt and despair, she worked to rebuild herself. Not only did Sarah return to her sport, but she also went on to compete in the Olympics, achieving not just the dream of participation, but the honor of standing on the podium. 
Sarah's story is a testament to the strength of the human spirit and the power of perseverance. It's a vivid illustration of resilience, of what it means to face adversity head on and say, this will not define me. I will overcome. You see, resilience isn't about avoiding the storms of life. It's about learning to dance in the rain, about finding a way to shine even when the skies are cloudy. It's about understanding that adversity is not an end point, but a part of the journey, a step on the path to achieving our dreams. Each of us has our own story of resilience, our own moments of adversity that we faced or are currently facing. The question is not whether these moments will come, but how we will respond when they do. Will we let them defeat us, or will we, like Sarah, use them as fuel to propel us forward, to push us towards becoming the best versions of ourselves? The key to overcoming adversity with resilience lies in our mindset. It's in believing that no obstacle is insurmountable, no dream out of reach. It's in knowing that each setback is a setup for a comeback, that every failure is a stepping stone to success. It's in understanding that resilience is not a trait we're born with, but a skill we can develop, a muscle we can strengthen with each challenge we face. So as we navigate the twists and turns of life, let's remember Sarah's story. Let's remember that within each of us lies an indomitable spirit, a wellspring of resilience waiting to be tapped. Let's face our adversities not with fear, but with courage, not with despair, but with determination. Let's embrace the power of resilience, and in doing so, transform our greatest challenges into our greatest victories. Now, let's delve into the importance of self-reflection. This is the mirror we hold up to our own souls, asking ourselves, who am I? Where am I going? What have I learned from the paths I've traveled? Self-reflection is not about dwelling on the past, but learning from it, understanding our successes and our failures, our strengths and our areas for improvement. It's through this process that we gain deeper insights into our own character. Adaptation, the ability to adjust to new conditions, to change course when the path we're on leads to a dead end, is crucial. It's about listening to the feedback life gives us, whether in the form of challenges that test our resolve or opportunities that beckon us toward new horizons. Adaptation is recognizing that the strategies that brought us success in the past may not be the ones that will carry us forward into the future. It's about being flexible, open to change, and ready to pivot when necessary. To illustrate these points, let me share a story about a tree. Yes, a tree. Imagine a tree that's grown tall and strong, its branches reaching high into the sky. This tree could have chosen to grow in one direction, straight up, but instead it branched out, exploring new directions, adapting to the sunlight, the wind, and the rain. Over time, it grew not just in size, but in beauty and strength, becoming more resilient to the storms it faced. Like this tree, our growth is multidimensional, fueled by our willingness to learn, reflect, and adapt. All these insights, all these strategies, they hinge on one essential element, a commitment to excellence. It's about setting a standard for ourselves that exceeds the ordinary, pushing beyond our perceived limits and reaching for the extraordinary. This commitment isn't a one-time declaration. It's a daily practice, a constant striving to be better today than we were yesterday. Now, I urge you, don't let this be just another conversation that fades into the background of your busy life. Let it be the spark that ignites a flame within you, a flame of desire, determination, and dedication to your personal journey of growth and excellence. Take the first step today. It doesn't have to be monumental. Success, after all, is built on a foundation of small, consistent action. Whether it's setting a clear goal, choosing to adopt a positive outlook, dedicating time to learn something new, or simply deciding to stand back up in the face of failure, each small step is a victory in its own right. Remember, the path to excellence is not a sprint. It's a marathon. There will be challenges, there will be setbacks, but there will also be triumphs and moments of unparalleled joy. Embrace it all. 
Let each experience, each lesson, enrich you, strengthen you, and propel you forward. Imagine this. A man, much like any one of us, stands at the edge of a beautiful, vast ocean. He looks out towards the horizon, feeling the gentle touch of the wind, and he sees the endless possibilities that lie before him. Yet he is hesitant to step into the water to begin his journey. He is held back by invisible chains of doubt, fear, and uncertainty. This man's story is not unique. It is, in many ways, our story, the story of every person who has ever stood at the brink of a life-changing decision wondering whether to step forward or to remain in the comfort of the familiar shore. In life, saving your own life isn't just about physical survival. It's about liberating yourself from the constraints of your own doubts, fears, and limiting beliefs. It's about choosing a path of personal growth, of embracing the power that lies within each of us to shape our destiny. It's an inner journey that starts with a single decision, the decision to take charge, to become the architect of your own life. Consider for a moment the profound power of choice. Every day we're faced with choices, small choices, like what to eat for breakfast and larger ones, like what career to pursue or where to invest our energy and our time. These choices, as many as they may seem, weave the tapestry of our lives. They are the threads that shape our days, our years, and eventually, our entire existence. Now we'll reflect on the concept of time. Time once spent is gone forever. It's the most valuable resource we have. Each moment presents a new opportunity, a fresh canvas on which to paint the story of our lives. Yet so often we let these moments slip by unnoticed and unseized. How often have we said, I'll do it tomorrow or someday I'll get around to it. But let me remind you, someday is a dangerous word. It's often a synonym for never. The man standing by the ocean, contemplating his journey, has a choice to make. Does he remain on the shore, held back by his fears, or does he step into the waters of opportunity, embracing the uncertainty that comes with every worthy venture? This decision, like all decisions in life, is his to make. This brings us to a crucial understanding about life. It's not just what happens to us, but how we respond to what happens to us that shapes our lives. You see, we cannot control the winds, but we can adjust our sails. We cannot direct the course of events, but we can choose our path through them. That saving your own lives is about embracing the power of choice and the value of time. It's about understanding that the decisions you make today shape your tomorrow. It's about recognizing that in your hands lies the power to shape your destiny. Let us hold this thought close in life. The most significant step you can take is the next one. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, and today we take that step together, understanding the power of our choices and the irreplaceable value of each moment we are given. Step into the waters of opportunity and begin the journey of saving your own life. As we step into the waters of opportunity and begin this journey of self-discovery and empowerment, reflect on two crucial elements that govern our existence, time and choice. These are the twin pillars that hold the power to shape our lives, our destinies, and our legacies. Think about time for a moment. Time flows continuously like a river. It doesn't stop, wait, or pause. Each of us is given the same 24 hours in a day 168 hours in a week, and yet, how we use this time varies immensely. Time is the great equalizer. It shows no favoritism. The billionaire and the beggar each have the same amount to spend. The question then becomes, how do we spend this precious, irreplaceable commodity? You see, time is more valuable than gold, more precious than the rarest diamond. Once a moment passes, it's gone forever. Therefore, the way we choose to use our time becomes a clear reflection of our priorities, values, and the depth of our wisdom. It's easy to say, I don't have time. But what we're really saying is, it's not a priority. 
Understanding this truth can be both sobering and empowering. It calls us to live intentionally, to choose wisely, and to invest our time in pursuits that enrich our lives and the lives of those around us. Now let's turn our gaze to choice. Life is a series of choices, each one leading us down a different path. Every morning when we wake, we face choices, some as mundane as what to wear, others as significant as whom to trust or what to believe. Our choices, big and small, weave the fabric of our experiences, our character, and ultimately, our destiny. Consider the impact of choices in shaping our lives. Choices are the raw materials from which we build our days. They are the architects of our future. When you choose courage over fear, action over inaction, and hope over despair, you are setting the stage for greatness in your life. The power of choice is the steering wheel of your journey. It directs your path and determines your destination. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Choosing wisely is not always easy. It requires discernment, wisdom, and often a willingness to swim against the current of popular opinion or short-term gratification. It's about seeing beyond the immediate, about understanding the long-term consequences of our actions. Delve into a simple truth? Life doesn't just happen. Instead, it unfolds based on the choices we make. Think about a person who chooses to invest in learning a new skill versus one who chooses to spend that time aimlessly. Over a year, over a decade, the gap between their lives will widen, not because of luck or fate, but because of choice. I urge you to consider the compound effect of your choices. Much like investing money, where the magic of compound interest transforms small deposits into a fortune over time, the choices you make can compound to create a future of either great success or regret. Choose to cultivate positive habits, nurture healthy relationships, and invest in your personal growth. Each positive choice is like a seed planted in the fertile soil of your future, destined to grow into a tree of success and fulfillment. Understand that the value of time and choice is immeasurable. Your time, once spent, cannot be reclaimed. Your choices, once made, set in motion a series of consequences, good or bad. Together, time and choice weave the tapestry of your life story. The essence of life isn't about the number of breaths we take, but the moments that take our breath away. These moments are not a matter of chance, but a matter of choice choose to make every second count. Choose to live not by default, but by design. The power of time and choice, and in doing so, truly begin the process of saving our own lives. In our journey of self-saving, understanding your worth is like finding the bedrock upon which you can build a fortress. It's about recognizing and appreciating the inherent value that you possess, a value that does not diminish regardless of external circumstances or opinions. This self-awareness is a beacon that guides you through life storms, a compass that helps you navigate even when the waters are rough. Consider for a moment the value of a single life, your life. It's a unique blend of talents, experiences, dreams, and aspirations. There's a profound truth that each of us needs to internalize. No one else in this world is quite like you. You are not just a drop in the ocean, but an entire ocean in a drop. The first step in saving your own life is realizing this fundamental worth. But why is it that so many of us struggle with understanding our worth? Often it's because we've allowed the world to dictate our value. We've let our failures, our missteps, and the voices of doubt, both internal and external, drown out the truth of our intrinsic worth. We've measured ourselves against impossible standards and unrealistic expectations. It's like trying to climb a ladder whose top rungs keep moving further away. Understanding your worth is about reconnecting with your inner self, that part of you that knows your true value. 
It's about looking beyond the surface, beyond the accolades and achievements, to see the inherent value that lies within. It's about shifting the focus from what you do to who you are. Let me share a simple yet profound principle. Your worth is not determined by your productivity. You are valuable not because of what you produce or achieve, but because of who you are. Your worth doesn't fluctuate with the ups and downs of life. It remains constant, like a lighthouse that stands unshaken by the waves that crash against it. Your worth is steadfast. Realizing your worth is akin to unlocking a vast reservoir of potential. When you know your value, you begin to invest in yourself differently. You make choices that reflect your worth. You start to save your own life in ways you never thought possible. It's like planting a garden in your soul, nurturing it with respect, love, and care. This understanding also transforms how you interact with the world. When you appreciate your worth, you demand respect, not out of arrogance, but out of a deep sense of self-respect. You set boundaries not to isolate yourself, but to protect the precious gift of your life and time. You engage with the world from a place of strength, not insecurity. So how do you cultivate this understanding? Start by reflecting on your life experiences, the challenges you've overcome, the hurdles you've jumped. Each of these is a testament to your strength and resilience. Diamonds are formed under pressure. Similarly, your worth is refined and revealed through the trials you face and overcome. Another key aspect is to surround yourself with people who recognize and affirm your worth. Relationships should be mirrors that reflect the best in us, not distortions that diminish our value. Choose to be around people who nurture your spirit, encourage your dreams, and celebrate your uniqueness. Embrace your strengths and acknowledge your weaknesses, not as failings, but as opportunities for growth. Understanding your worth doesn't mean you're perfect. It means you recognize your inherent value even as you work on your imperfections. It's about giving yourself the grace to be a work in progress. That understanding your worth is the cornerstone of saving your own life. It's about seeing yourself through a lens of respect and dignity. It's about making choices that align with this profound understanding, with this newfound appreciation of your worth. You are better equipped to set goals and visions that resonate with who you truly are. Goals that are not just reflections of societal expectations, but expressions of your deepest desires and values. As we venture into the realm of setting goals and visions, carry with us this solid understanding of our worth. Let it be the guiding light as we chart the course of our lives, shaping our future with intention and purpose. Not just dreaming of a better life, but actively crafting it, anchored in the profound realization of our intrinsic worth. Anchored in the profound realization of our intrinsic worth. We now turn our attention to the power of goals and vision. This is where the magic begins, where the abstract becomes concrete, where dreams start their journey towards reality. Setting goals and having a vision is like drawing a map for your life. Without these, you're like a ship without a rudder, drifting aimlessly in an endless sea. Goals and vision are not just fanciful desires. They are powerful tools. They are the forces that propel you forward, that turn the invisible into the visible. Consider a goal as the point on the horizon to which you are sailing. Your vision is the wind in your sails, pushing you towards that destination without a destination in mind without the wind guiding you, where would you end up? Likely not where you hope to be. Now dive deeper into the nature of goals. A goal is more than just a wish or a hope. A goal is a clearly defined target, something you can measure, something you can achieve. It's the difference between saying, I want to lose weight and I will lose 10 pounds in the next three months. Precision in your goals is key. It's like setting coordinates in a navigation system. The more accurate they are, the more likely you are to reach your destination. But setting goals is just part of the equation. The other part is the vision. 
that inspires these goals. Vision is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. It's the ability to dream big and imagine the kind of life you want to live, the person you want to become, the legacy you want to leave. Your vision is your, why, why, it's the driving force behind your goals. Creating a vision requires courage. It's about allowing yourself to dream, to think big, to break free from the constraints of your current circumstances. It's about looking beyond the horizon, seeing beyond the immediate obstacles, and envisioning a brighter future. Let's think about vision in the context of a gardener. A gardener doesn't just see the seeds. They see the potential for growth, the blooming flowers, the ripe fruits. Their vision guides their actions, where to plant, how to nurture, when to harvest. Similarly, your vision for your life guides your choices and directs your actions. The power of a well-defined vision is immense. It gives you a sense of purpose, a direction to move in. It fuels your motivation and ignites your passion. When the path becomes tough, when obstacles arise, it's your vision that keeps you going, that reminds you why you started in the first place. To be clear, dreaming alone is not enough. Vision without action is merely a dream. Action without vision is just passing the time. Vision with action can change your life. This is where setting specific, achievable goals comes into play. Your goals are the steps you take towards realizing your vision. They are the milestones that mark your progress. So how do you set effective goals? Start by making them specific and achievable. Break down your larger vision into smaller, manageable goals. If your vision is to build a successful business, your immediate goal might be to develop a business plan or to secure financing. These smaller goals are like the rungs on a ladder, leading you to the top. Equally important is writing down your goals. There's something powerful about putting your goals in writing. It's a commitment, a declaration to yourself that you are serious about achieving them. It's a physical manifestation of your inner desires. Also, set a timeline for your goals. Deadlines create a sense of urgency and prompt action. They help you to prioritize and focus your energies where they are most needed. As you set your goals and envision your future, remember to be flexible. Life is unpredictable, and your goals might need to adjust as circumstances change. Flexibility doesn't mean giving up on your vision. It means being adaptable in your approach. The power goals, goals and vision, let them be the guiding lights in our journey, the forces that drive us towards our ultimate destination. With our goals set and our vision clear, we are ready to confront the inevitable obstacles and challenges that life throws our way. In the next phase of our journey, we will explore how to transform these obstacles into stepping stones, turning challenges into opportunities for growth. Let's move forward with confidence, knowing that our goals and vision are the compasses guiding our journey. With our goals set and our vision clear, it's essential to recognize that the path to success is rarely a straight line. There will be obstacles, setbacks, and challenges. But here's a powerful truth. These obstacles are not just barriers. They can be transformed into stepping stones. Each obstacle presents an opportunity for growth a chance to build resilience and a test of our commitment to our vision. Think of obstacles as the raw materials for building the life you desire. Just as a sculptor takes a block of marble and sees the potential for a masterpiece within, you can look at obstacles and see opportunities for growth and learning. This perspective shift is crucial. It's not what happens to you, but how you respond to what happens to you that makes the difference. The first step in transforming obstacles into stepping stones is to adopt a mindset of resilience. Resilience is the ability to bounce back from setbacks, to remain steadfast in the face of challenges. It's a quality that, like a muscle, gets stronger with use. Each time you encounter a setback and choose to move forward, you build resilience. You learn that obstacles are not the end of the road, but merely bends in the road. Now consider the nature of obstacles. They come in various forms, a failure, a rejection, 
an unexpected turn of events. It's easy to view these as negative experiences, but within each lies a seed of equivalent or greater benefit. Failure teaches you what doesn't work, guiding you towards what might. Our rejection can be a redirection to a new opportunity, a chance to pivot towards something better. An unexpected turn of events can open new doors, paths you might not have considered otherwise. Take the story of a young entrepreneur whose first business venture failed spectacularly. Instead of letting this defeat him, he used the experience to learn about what not to do in business. He studied his mistakes, sought advice, and gained wisdom that was invaluable in his next venture, which turned out to be a resounding success. His initial failure wasn't a setback. It was a setup for his future success. This approach to obstacles requires a shift in perspective. It requires viewing life as a journey of continual learning and growth. Each obstacle is a lesson, each challenge a quiz, each setback a course in the curriculum of life. Embrace this learning mindset, and you'll find that obstacles lose their power to derail. Instead, they become stepping stones, leading you to higher levels of understanding and achievement. Another key in transforming obstacles into stepping stones is to maintain a positive attitude. A positive attitude doesn't mean ignoring the reality of the situation. It means maintaining hope and optimism in the face of difficulties. It's about focusing on solutions rather than problems, on what can be done rather than what can't. The same wind blows on us all. It's not the blow of the wind, but the set of the sail that determines where we end up. You can choose to set your sail, to use whatever wind comes your way, to move forward, to propel you in the direction of your goals and dreams. As you face obstacles, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? How can this make me stronger? What's the opportunity hidden in this challenge? By asking these questions, you shift your focus from the obstacle itself to the potential it holds. It's also important to stay flexible and adaptable. Sometimes obstacles require us to change course to find a new way to reach our destination. Flexibility is the quality that allows you to navigate through the uncertain waters of life, making adjustments as needed, but always keeping your destination in sight. You'll find that some of the greatest stories of success are those born from the ashes of failure. These stories are not just tales of triumph. They are reminders of the human spirit's resilience and capability to overcome the obstacles we encounter. Transform them into stepping stones, using them to build the path to our goals and vision. Let these challenges refine us, strengthen us, and prepare us for the success that lies ahead. As we navigate through the detours and obstacles of our journey, understanding the role of discipline and consistency becomes crucial. These are not just words. They are the bedrock of achieving any significant success in life. Discipline and consistency are the tools that help us apply what we learn from our obstacles, ensuring that we continue to move forward towards our vision and goals. Discipline, in its essence, is the ability to give yourself a command and then follow through with it. It's the bridge between thought and accomplishment between inspiration and achievement. It's easy to do something once or twice, but to do it consistently, day in and day out, regardless of how you feel, that requires discipline. Consistency is the key to this equation. It's the rhythmic pattern of discipline that creates habits, and habits shape our future. Imagine planting a seed. If you water it sporadically, it may sprout but without consistent care, it won't thrive. The same goes for your goals and dreams. They need the consistent nourishment of effort and action to blossom into reality. Think of discipline and consistency as the twin guardians of success. They stand at the gates of achievement, ensuring that only those who are truly committed pass through. They ask of you not just a momentary effort, but a commitment to stay the course to keep going even when the going gets tough. Delve deeper into the power of discipline. 
Discipline is not a matter of restriction, but a means of liberation. It frees you from the whims of circumstance and the fickleness of mood. With discipline, you gain control over your actions and consequently over your outcomes. It's about making the choice to stay focused on your goals even when distractions beckon. Turn our focus to consistency. Consistency is about maintaining your efforts over time. It's about showing up day after day, committed to your journey, regardless of how visible the results are in the moment. It's the accumulation of small, consistent steps that lead to significant achievements. To cultivate discipline and consistency, start with small commitments. Don't overwhelm yourself with trying to make massive changes overnight. Remember, the tallest oak in the forest was once just a little nut that held its ground. Begin with manageable tasks and gradually build up your capacity for discipline. One practical way to build discipline is to develop routines. Routines provide structure to your days, making it easier to maintain your efforts towards your goals. Whether it's a morning routine that sets the tone for your day or an evening routine that helps you reflect and plan for the next day, routines can be powerful tools in your journey towards success. Another aspect of cultivating discipline and consistency is to track your progress. Seeing the small steps of progress adds up can be incredibly motivating. It's a tangible reminder that your efforts are bearing fruit even if the ultimate goal is still on the horizon. It's also important to stay flexible and adaptable. Sometimes discipline means being strict with your plans, but other times it means being flexible enough to adapt to changing circumstances. The key is to maintain the essence of your effort even if the form needs to change. As you walk this path, that discipline and consistency are not just about achieving external goals. They are also about internal growth. They shape your character, hone your focus, and build resilience. They are the qualities that turn dreamers into doers, wishers into winners. In this journey of life, you will encounter moments of doubt and temptation. In those moments, let discipline and consistency be your anchors, keeping you grounded in your pursuit of greatness. As we journey onward, with discipline and consistency as our steadfast companions, let's turn our attention to the remarkable power of a positive attitude and gratitude. These are not just mere sentiments. They are formidable tools that have the power to transform our lives, our relationships, and indeed our entire world. A positive attitude is not about wearing rose-colored glasses or ignoring life's challenges. Rather, it's about choosing to see the potential for good in every situation. It's about maintaining a hopeful outlook and focusing on solutions rather than problems. This mindset doesn't just make our journey more pleasant. It also makes it more productive. A positive attitude sparks creativity, fuels persistence, and attracts success. Think about the power of attitude like the sails of a ship. While we cannot control the wind, the circumstances and events that life throws our way, we can adjust our sails, our attitudes. By choosing a positive attitude, we set the course of our journey, regardless of where the winds of life are blowing. And then there's gratitude. Gratitude is more than a feeling. It's a perspective. It's about appreciating what you have rather than lamenting what you don't. It's recognizing the value in the simple things. A smile, a helping hand, the beauty of a sunset. When we cultivate a sense of gratitude, we open our hearts to the abundance of life and we find riches in the most unexpected places. Gratitude has the power to transform an ordinary day into a day of thanksgiving and routine tasks into joyous activities. It shifts our focus from what's missing to what's present. This shift in perspective is not just mentally and emotionally beneficial. It can have tangible, practical benefits as well. A grateful heart attracts positive relationships, better health, and indeed, a more fulfilled life. Not forget, a positive attitude and gratitude are choices.
They are decisions we make each day. When we wake up in the morning, we can choose to be grateful, to see the potential for good in the day ahead. And when we face challenges, we can choose to maintain a positive outlook to find the silver lining, even in the darkest clouds. In the tapestry of life, a positive attitude and gratitude are the threads that add color and texture. They turn the ordinary into the extraordinary. They make the difference between a life lived and a life cherished. Let us harness the power of a positive attitude and gratitude. Let them be our guiding lights, illuminating our way through the EPS and downs of our journey. As we come to the close of this journey, the journey of self-salvation, it's vital to recognize that this is not the end, but a new beginning. What we have traversed is a path of awakening, a realization of our own power to shape our destiny and to save ourselves from the confines of unfulfilled potential. Throughout this journey, we have uncovered the importance of time and choice, the bedrock of understanding our worth, the transformative power of goals and vision, the resilience in facing obstacles, and the unwavering strength found in discipline and consistency. We have learned that adopting a positive attitude and cultivating gratitude can illuminate the darkest. Remember, the journey of self-salvation is a continuous process. It's a daily commitment to live with intention, to make choices that align with your deepest values, and to embrace the journey with all its twists and turns. It's about being true to yourself and recognizing that every step, every decision, and every challenge is an opportunity to grow stronger, wiser, and more fulfilled. As we step forward from here, let's carry these lessons close to our hearts. Let's remember that our lives are a work of art that we are continuously creating, a story that we are constantly writing. Every day presents a new canvas, a fresh page, and it's up to us to fill it with color and meaning. So, Let's move forward with purpose, with the knowledge that we have the power to shape our lives, to save ourselves, and to craft a journey that is uniquely ours. Here's to our journey of self-salvation, a journey that never truly ends, but evolves with each step we take. Let's embrace it with courage, with hope, and with the unwavering belief that the best is yet to come. Ladies and gentlemen, today we gather here not just to talk, but to ignite a transformation within us. The topic at hand, winning is the only option. Might sound like a bold statement, but it's more than that. It's a philosophy, a way of life that guides the successful. You see, winning is not just about the trophy or the accolade. It's about the journey to excellence and the relentless pursuit of improvement. Now, let's clear the air. What does winning mean to you? Is it wealth, health, happiness, or perhaps all of these? Winning can be different for each one of us, but the core principle remains the same. It's about rising above challenges, defying odds, and setting a standard for ourselves. You might ask, how do we make winning our only option? The answer lies within us. It starts with our attitude. Our attitude is the lens through which we see the world, the blueprint of our destiny. You see, two people can look at the same situation. One sees an obstacle, and the other sees an opportunity. It's all about perspective. Winning begins with believing you can win. It's about nurturing a mindset that looks for solutions, not excuses. But let's not forget Attitude alone won't take you to the finish line. It needs to be coupled with action. Action is the bridge between your winning aspirations and their realization. You could have the most sophisticated map to a treasure, but unless you embark on the journey, unless you take those steps, the map is just a piece of paper. So how do we take action? It starts with setting goals. Goals are like stars. They guide us in the night sky of our lives. But remember, a goal without a plan is just a wish. Break down your goals into actionable steps. Whether it's in your personal life, your career, or your health, 
have a clear vision of where you're heading. Now consider this, winning is a habit, just as losing can be. The small choices we make each day accumulate over time. Choosing to wake up early to exercise, opting for a healthy meal over fast food, reading a book instead of watching TV. These are the choices that determine if we're on the path to winning or not. The consistency in these small choices builds the discipline necessary to win. But let's talk about failure. Yes, failure. Winning doesn't mean you won't face setbacks. In fact, failure is an integral part of the journey. It's the greatest teacher you'll ever have. The question is not whether you will face it, it's how you will respond to it. Will you let it define you or will you let it refine you? Every failure carries a lesson and the ability to learn from failure is a hallmark of a winner. Remember, winning is not a solo sport. It's a team effort. Surround yourself with people who share your vision and passion. People who challenge you, inspire you, and push you to be your best. As they say, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Your network, your relationships, they are your net worth. As we journey on this path of winning, let's not forget the role of gratitude and humility. Be grateful for your successes, but never complacent. Humility keeps us grounded and open to continuous learning. Remember, the moment you think you've arrived is the moment you start losing. Winning, in its truest sense, is more than just reaching a destination. It's about the character you build on the journey. It's about the resilience, the determination, and the grit that you develop along the way. Winning is about becoming a better version of yourself every single day. Consider this. What does it take to build a mindset where winning is the only option? It starts with self-discipline. Self-discipline is the inner strength that drives you to get out of bed on a cold morning to exercise. It's the willpower to say no to distractions and yes to your goals. It's the commitment to your decisions, but flexibility in your approach. Consistency is the key to mastery. Whether it's in sports, arts, business, or any other field, the greats are those who show up every day, no matter what. It's easy to be enthusiastic at the start or when things are going well. But the real challenge and the real test of winning is staying consistent even when things get tough. It's about doing what needs to be done, even when you don't feel like doing it. But how do we stay consistent? The secret lies in building routines and habits. To create a routine that aligns with your goals. If winning for you means being in top health, your routine should include exercise, proper diet, and enough rest. If it's excelling in, in your career, your routine should include continuous learning, networking, and skill development. Remember, routines translate aspirations into action. Furthermore, embrace the power of learning. In a rapidly changing world, the only way to stay ahead is to keep learning. Your mind is your greatest asset. Invest in it, read books, attend seminars, engage in meaningful conversations. The more you learn, the better equipped you are to win. Let's also address the importance of adaptability. The road to winning is not a straight line. It's filled with curves, detours, and sometimes roadblocks. The ability to adapt to changing circumstances, to pivot when necessary, is crucial in your winning journey. Adaptability is about being flexible in your approach while staying firm in your destination. Now think about the impact of mindset. Your mindset can be your greatest ally or your biggest enemy. Okay. Cultivate a growth mindset. A mindset that sees challenges as opportunities to grow that values effort, that learns from criticism, and that finds lessons and inspiration in the success of others. In winning, it's also vital to maintain balance. While pursuing your goals, don't forget to live. Spend time with your loved ones. Engage in activities that rejuvenate you and take care of your mental health. After all, 
What's winning if it comes at the cost of your happiness and peace? Making winning your only option is about a holistic approach to life. It's about building a character that resonates with success, resilience, and continuous growth. It's about setting standards for yourself and relentlessly pursuing them. It's about enjoying the journey as much as the destination. Remember that every day is an opportunity to move closer to your definition of winning it's in your daily actions. Your habits, your attitude, and your choices. Embrace the journey with passion, determination, and a steadfast commitment to excellence. The concept of winning being the only option, it's important to understand the role of vision and clarity in our journey. Vision is seeing the potential future, a clear picture of where you want to go. Clarity in your vision is paramount. It's like setting sail on, on the sea. Without a clear destination, you're simply drifting subject to the whims of the winds and the currents. Your vision acts as your compass, guiding you through the rough waters and keeping you on course. But how do you develop this clear vision? It starts with self-reflection. Ask yourself, what truly matters to you? What legacy do you want to leave? This introspection is the foundation of your personal vision. It's not about what others expect of you, but about what you want for yourself. Your vision should excite you, ignite your passion, and give you a sense of purpose. Now let's consider the power of goals within this vision. Goals are the milestones on the journey to your vision. They should be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. But remember, while goals are important, flexibility is key. Be willing to adjust your goals as you grow and as circumstances change. The essence of winning is not just in achieving your goals, but in the person you become by striving towards them. Furthermore, understand the significance of persistence. The journey to winning is fraught with challenges and setbacks, but it's persistence that helps you overcome these hurdles. It's about the relentless pursuit of your goals, the unwavering spirit that says, I will try one more time. Every failure, every setback is a stepping stone to success if you persist. Your environment, including the people you surround yourself with, profoundly influences your journey. Surround yourself with people who uplift you, who challenge you to be better, who support your dreams and share your enthusiasm. As famously said, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Choose these people wisely. Moral winning is about contribution. It's not just about personal achievement, but also about making a difference in the lives of others. True winning is when you elevate others on your journey. Share your knowledge, lend a helping hand, Inspire and motivate those around you. In doing so, you amplify your own journey towards winning. In essence, making winning your only option is a multifaceted endeavor. It's about having a clear vision, setting and persistently pursuing meaningful goals, creating a supportive environment, and contributing to the growth and success of others. It's a journey that requires self-reflection, persistence, adaptability, and a continuous effort towards personal growth. Remember that every day is a new opportunity, a new chapter in the story of our lives. Every choice we make, every action we take, is a stroke of the brush on the canvas of our journey towards winning. With each day, we paint our masterpiece, defined by our persistence, our learning, our growth, and our contribution, a sense of purpose, a relentless spirit, and a heart full of passion. Make winning our only option, not just in our achievements, but in the quality of our character, the depth of our relationships, and the impact we have on the world. As we journey through this exploration, let's discuss the significance of embracing change and uncertainty. The path to winning is often unpredictable and ever-changing. The ability to adapt to change to remain flexible yet focused is a key trait of those who succeed. Embracing change isn't just about being reactive, it's about being proactive, about anticipating 
and preparing for change. It's about being a step ahead, ready to pivot and adapt. Now, consider the role of creativity and innovation in your winning journey. Winning often requires thinking outside the box, exploring uncharted territories, and challenging the status quo. It's about not just following paths, but creating them. Be open to new ideas, new methods, and new approaches. The willingness to try something different, to take calculated risks, can set you apart in your pursuit of success. Let's also acknowledge the importance of health and well-being in this equation. True winning encompasses more than just professional or financial success. It includes personal well-being. Take care of your physical health through regular exercise and proper nutrition. Pay attention to your mental health, managing stress and fostering a positive mindset. Remember, a sound body and mind are your greatest assets on the road to victory. Moreover, the journey to winning is also about balance. It's about finding harmony between your work and personal life, your ambitions and your relationships, your professional pursuits, and your personal passion. Balance prevents burnout, keeps you grounded, and ensures that your journey to success is sustainable and enjoyable. Let's highlight the power of patience and timing. While persistence and action are crucial, understanding the value of patience is equally important. Some goals take time to achieve. Some dreams unfold in their own time. Be patient and trust the process. Timing is often a critical factor in success. Not every action yields immediate results, but with patience and persistence, results will come. Furthermore, Celebrate your victories, both big and small. Celebrating your achievements boosts your confidence, reinforces positive behavior, and keeps you motivated. However, in your celebrations, remain humble. Humility allows you to stay open to learning and growth, keeping you grounded and focused. Making winning your only option is a holistic approach. It's about embracing change and being innovative, maintaining health and balance, being patient, and celebrating your victories with humility. It's a journey of continuous growth, learning, and adaptation. As we forge ahead on this path, let's cherish each moment, each lesson, and each victory. Let's build a legacy of success, not just in what we achieve, but in how we achieve it, with integrity, resilience, and a commitment to excellence. Let's not just aim to win in the conventional sense, but let's redefine winning in terms of personal growth, community impact, and the positive legacy we leave behind. You have the power to make winning your only option. It lies in your choices, your actions, and your determination. Embark on this journey with confidence, embrace each challenge with courage, and pursue your goals with unwavering passion. Turn our focus towards the importance of resilience. Resilience is the ability to bounce back from setbacks, to not just endure, but to thrive in the face of adversity. It's about having the mental toughness to persevere when things don't go as planned. Remember, the road to success is often paved with challenges, and it's resilience that allows you to navigate through these challenges without losing sight of your goals. Let's talk about the concept of lifelong learning. To win consistently, you must become a student of life. This means being open to new knowledge, new skills, and new experience. Lifelong learning keeps you relevant, adaptable, and forward thinking. It's about having an insatiable curiosity and relentless pursuit of knowledge. Whether it's reading books, attending workshops, or simply engaging in thoughtful conversations, Every learning opportunity is a step closer to your version of winning. Now, let's consider the power of positive thinking. Your thoughts have a profound impact on your actions and your outcomes. Cultivate a positive mindset. See challenges as opportunities, setbacks as lessons, and hard work as the pathway to success. A positive attitude will not only inspire you, but also those around you. It's a contagious energy 
that can transform your environment and open doors to new possibilities. Another key aspect is the power of effective communication. Winning often involves others, whether it's in a team environment, business negotiations, or personal relationships. Effective communication helps you articulate your vision, influence others positively, and build strong relationships. It's about listening as much as it is about speaking. Understand that clear, honest and empathetic communication is a cornerstone of success. Moreover, let's acknowledge the value of giving back. True winning is when you use your success to make a difference in the world. It's about sharing your knowledge, mentoring others, and contributing to your community. The fulfillment you gain from giving back adds a profound layer to your achievements, making your journey to success even more meaningful. Understand the importance of self-care and mindfulness. In the pursuit of our goals, it's easy to neglect our own well-being. Practicing self-care and mindfulness ensures that you remain mentally and physically fit to take on the challenges of your journey. It's about giving yourself the time to recharge, reflect and maintain a clear and focused mind. Making win your only option is a comprehensive approach that includes resilience, lifelong learning, positive thinking, effective communication, giving back, and self-care. It's about developing a winning mindset that sees beyond immediate success to a broader impact on the world and on personal well-being. That winning is a journey with many facets. It's not just about the destination, but about growing, learning, and evolving along the way. It's about cultivating a mindset and a lifestyle that embraces challenges, values learning, and cherishes the journey as much as the destination. So take these principles with you, let them guide your steps, inform your decisions, and shape your journey. Remember, with determination, resilience, and a commitment to continuous growth, winning can indeed be your only option. It's crucial to discuss the significance of strategic planning and execution. Winning is not just about hard work, it's about working smart. Strategic planning involves setting not just goals but detailed action plans to achieve those goals. It's about prioritizing your tasks, managing your time effectively, and focusing your energies where they are most needed. In execution, it's about following through with discipline and precision, ensuring that your plans are not just well thought out, but also well implemented. Let's also explore the importance of adaptability and innovation. The world is constantly changing, and to win, you must be able to adapt and innovate. This means staying ahead of trends, being open to new ideas, and being willing to change course when necessary. Innovation isn't just about big ideas. It's also about small, continuous improvements. Whether it's in your personal life, your business, or your relationships, be open to new ways of doing things and continually look for ways to improve. Moreover, consider the impact of emotional intelligence in your journey. Emotional intelligence is the ability to understand and manage your own emotions as well as the emotions of others. In the pursuit of winning, it's vital to be aware of and in control of your emotions. It's about maintaining composure in challenging situations, showing empathy towards others, and building strong, positive relationships. Emotional intelligence can be a significant advantage in navigating the complexities of both personal and professional life. Let's reflect on the role of courage and risk-taking. Winning often requires stepping out of your comfort zone. It's about having the courage to take risks, to try new things, and to face your fears. Remember, risk-taking should be calculated, not reckless, it's about weighing the pros and cons and making informed decisions. Courage is not the absence of fear. It's the determination to move forward despite the fear. In the realm of winning, it's also essential to understand the value of consistency and perseverance. Success is rarely an overnight phenomenon. 
It's the result of consistent effort over time. Perseverance means staying the course, even when the results are not immediate. It's about commitment to your goals and relentless pursuit of excellence. Furthermore, winning involves personal accountability and integrity. Be accountable for your actions, your decisions, and your results. Own your mistakes, learn from them, and use them as stepping stones to success. Integrity is fundamental. It's about doing the right thing, even when no one is watching. Your character and your reputation are invaluable assets on your journey to winning. Making winning your only option encompasses strategic planning, adaptability, emotional intelligence, courage, consistency, and integrity. It's about an autolistic approach that combines hard work with smart strategies, emotional awareness, courageous actions, and unwavering ethics. Embrace each of these elements. Let them guide your actions and influence your decisions. With a comprehensive approach that balances strategy with emotion, courage with caution, and action with ethics, you can make winning not just an aspiration, but a reality. Remember, the journey to winning is as important as the destination. Cherish each step, learn from each experience, and grow from each challenge. With determination, resilience, and a commitment to excellence, you can indeed make winning your only option. As we venture further, it's important to emphasize the role of personal values in your journey to winning. Your values are like your internal compass. They guide your decisions, shape your behavior, align your goals and actions with your values. When your actions are congruent with your values, you not only move towards winning, but also ensure that your success is meaningful and fulfilling. Now let's address the significance of mental and physical well-being. Your body and mind are the instruments through which you achieve success. Prioritizing your physical health through regular exercise, balanced nutrition, and adequate rest is crucial. Equally important is nurturing your mental health. Practices like meditation, mindfulness, and positive affirmations can enhance your mental strength, focus, and overall well-being. Remember, a healthy body and a sound mind are foundational to sustain success. Let's also talk about the power of gratitude. In the relentless pursuit of goals, it's easy to lose sight of what you already have. Cultivating an attitude of gratitude brings positivity and abundance into your life. It's about appreciating the small victories, the lessons learned, and the progress made. Gratitude not only enhances your well-being, but also attracts more success and opportunities. Furthermore, consider the importance of a supportive network. No one achieves success in isolation. Surround yourself with mentors, colleagues, friends, and family who support and believe in your dreams. These relationships provide encouragement, advice, and a sense of belonging. They can be a source of strength in challenging times and a cause for celebration in times of victory. Let's acknowledge the necessity of time management and prioritization. Winning involves making the best use of your most valuable asset, time. Active time management means prioritizing your tasks focusing on high-impact activities and eliminating distractions. It's about making each day count and ensuring that your actions align with your ultimate objective. Moreover, embrace the journey itself. The path to winning is as important as the destination. Enjoy the process, learn from each experience, and grow through every challenge. The journey shapes you, imparts lessons, and prepares you for the ultimate success. It's in the journey that character is built, resilience is forged, and wisdom is acquired. Making winning your only option involves aligning with your values, prioritizing mental and physical well-being, practicing gratitude, building a supportive network, managing your time effectively, and embracing the journey. It's a holistic approach that balances ambition with well-being, effort with appreciation, and action with reflection. 
As you progress on this path, let these principles guide you. Let them shape not just your actions, but also your mindset and character. With a balanced approach that integrates these elements, you can make winning a consistent theme in your life. Not just in achievements, but in personal growth, relationships, and overall fulfillment. Remember, winning is more than just achieving goals. It's about how you achieve them and the person you become in the process. With dedication, resilience, and a commitment to your principles, winning can indeed become your only option. It's essential to understand the power of self-awareness. Self-awareness is the deep understanding of your strengths, weaknesses, thoughts, beliefs, motivation, and emotions. It enables you to understand other people, how they perceive you, your attitude, and your responses to them in the moment. This is crucial because it helps you navigate your path to success with a clear understanding of your internal compass and how it aligns with your external actions. Now, let's consider the importance of constructive feedback. On your journey to winning, feedback is invaluable. It provides a different perspective and helps you to see things you might not be aware of in yourself. Welcoming constructive criticism not as a detriment to your self-esteem, but as a tool for growth is a sign of maturity and strength. It's about separating the wheat from the chaff in feedback, retaining what's beneficial and discarding what isn't. Let's also discuss the role of creativity and resourcefulness. Winning doesn't always require having the best resources. It requires being the most resourceful creativity in problem-solving, thinking outside conventional patterns, and making the most out of limited resources are traits that define true winners. It's about seeing possibilities where others see limitations. We must highlight the essence of authenticity and integrity. In your pursuit of winning, authenticity involves being genuine in your actions and words, staying true to your values, and not compromising your principles for temporary gains. Integrity involves the courage to do the right thing, even when it's difficult or unpopular. Remember, success without integrity is failure. Moreover, consider the necessity of fostering resilience and mental toughness. The journey to success is fraught with challenges, and it's your resilience that will carry you through. Mental toughness is about maintaining a positive attitude in the face of adversity and viewing challenges as opportunities for growth. It's about developing a resilient mindset that doesn't waver in tough times. Let's understand the importance of continuous improvement. The concept of Kaizen, or continuous improvement, is vital in the journey to winning. It's about never being satisfied with the status quo and always looking for ways to better yourself and your processes. This mindset keeps you agile, adaptable, and always ahead in the game. Making winning your only option involves developing self-awareness, welcoming constructive feedback, being creative and resourceful, maintaining authenticity and integrity, fostering resilience and mental toughness, and pursuing continuous improvement. These are the pillars that uphold the edifice of true success. As you forge ahead, armed with these insights, let your journey be marked by these principles. Let them guide your decisions, shape your actions, and define your path. With a commitment to these values, winning becomes more than an option. It becomes an inevitable outcome of your growth, your efforts, and your character. Remember, winning is not just about reaching a destination. It's about the excellence and integrity you embody on your journey. It's about becoming the best version of yourself, contributing positively to those around you, and leaving a legacy that transcends mere achievements. Imagine a world where complexity and stress are the norm. A world where every decision, every interaction, is fraught with intricacies and complications. Now picture the opposite, a life defined by simplicity where ease and clarity guide your every move. 
This contrasting scenario is not just a flight of fancy, but a profound truth about the nature of power and effectiveness. It's a secret that has been understood by some of the greatest minds and leaders throughout history, yet often overlooked in our modern, fast-paced world. The concept I'm going to share with you today is as timeless as it is powerful. The incredible strength that lies in being easy, in adopting simplicity in all aspects of life. This isn't about taking the easy way out, but about finding power in easy and simple. It's about understanding that the true measure of strength and influence often comes not from complexity and force, but from being approachable, clear, in the world of business, in our personal relationships, and within ourselves, the quest for complexity can often lead us astray. It's easy to believe that the more complicated our ideas, strategies, or words, are the more profound they must be, yet the opposite is often true. The most impactful ideas are those that are easily understood and the most influential people are often those who can communicate and act with clarity, simplicity. Throughout this speech, we'll explore the myriad ways in which simplicity and ease can transform your life. We'll see how being easy doesn't mean being weak or unambitious, but rather being effective, influential, and genuinely powerful. We'll uncover the secrets of those who have harnessed the power of simplicity to create lasting change, to lead, and to inspire. Simplicity in thought. Action and communication is not just a strategy. It's about stripping away the non-essential, focusing on what truly matters, and approaching challenges with a clear, unburdened mind. The results can be extraordinary. When we simplify, we gain clarity, and with clarity comes the ability to make decisions that are not only effective, but also resonate deeply with others. That each step towards simplicity is a step towards a more powerful, effective, and fulfilling life. It's about finding the strength in being easy, the power in clarity, and the profound impact of straightforwardness. This journey is not just about learning or understanding. It's about transforming the way we think, act, and interact. It's about becoming a beacon of clarity in a world often shrouded in complexity. Exploring the profound power that lies in simplicity and the surprising strength of being easy. In a world brimming with complexity, the uh, allure of simplicity is like a beacon of light in a foggy sea, guiding ships safely to shore. It is in this simplicity that we find true strength and unspoken elegance that underlies the most impactful actions and decisions. Consider the lives of those we admire, the great leaders, thinkers, and innovators. Their greatness often lies not in the complexity of their thoughts, but in the simplicity of their execution. They see the world not as a tangled web of insurmountable challenges, but as a canvas of opportunities, each waiting to be approached with a clear and focused mind. The simplicity of thought allows for efficiency, clarity, and most importantly, the ability to inspire and lead others. Bring this concept closer to our everyday lives. Each of us is faced with a barrage of decisions daily. From the moment we wake up to the time we rest our heads, our minds are in constant motion, navigating through a myriad of choices and challenges. Imagine for a moment if we could filter out the noise, the unnecessary clutter that fills our day. What if we could distill our lives down to its essence, focusing only on what truly matters? This is the essence of simplicity. It is about identifying the core of our existence and dedicating our energy to it. In the context of personal development, the power of simplicity is transformative. 
It's about setting clear, attainable goals and pursuing them with unwavering focus. It's about understanding our true desires and motivations and aligning our actions with them. When we simplify our goals, we remove the barriers of over-analysis and procrastination. We become more decisive, more action-oriented. This approach to personal development not only accelerates our growth, but also enhances our sense of fulfillment and achievement. Turning to the realm of business and entrepreneurship, simplicity is an invaluable asset. The most successful businesses are often those that offer simple solutions to complex problems. They don't overcomplicate their products or services. Instead, they focus on what they do best and continuously refine it. This principle applies equally to business strategies. The most effective strategies are straightforward, easily communicated, and understood by everyone involved. This clarity of purpose and direction is what drives a business forward, cutting through the ambiguity and indecision that can stifle progress. In our interpersonal relationships, the power of simplicity is equally evident. Relationships thrive on clarity, honesty, and straightforward. When we communicate openly and simply with those around us, we foster a deeper sense of understanding and connection. We avoid misunderstandings and conflicts that often arise from unnecessary complexity in our words and actions. Simplicity in our interactions builds trust. And it is this trust that forms the foundation of strong, lasting relationships. But how do we cultivate this simplicity in our lives? It begins with introspection. We must take the time to understand what is truly important to us, what drives us, and what brings us joy. This understanding allows us to prioritize our actions and focus our energies where they matter most. It also involves letting go, releasing the excess baggage that weighs us down, whether it's material possessions, unproductive habits, or negative thoughts. In adopting simplicity, we also embrace minimalism in our lifestyle. This doesn't mean living with the bare minimum. Rather, it's about surrounding ourselves with things that add value and meaning to our lives. It's about quality over quantity, substance over superficiality. In a minimalist lifestyle, we find a sense of calm and contentment that eludes us in the chaos of excess. We must remember that simplicity is not a destination, but a continuous path. It's a choice we make every day, in every aspect of our lives. It's about constantly asking ourselves whether our actions align with our core values and priorities. This ongoing process of refinement and focus is what enables us to live more fulfilling. Embrace the power of simplicity. Strip away the non-essential focus on what truly matters and approach life with a clear, unburdened mind. In doing so, we will discover that the simplest approach is often the most powerful. It's a journey that requires patience, discipline, and a willingness to let go, but the rewards are immeasurable. In this spirit of clarity and purpose, Explore how simplicity and communication can amplify our influence and impact. As we transition to our next focus, remember that the clarity of our message is not just in what we say, but in how we say it. Let's explore how straightforward and clear communication can transform not just the message, but the messenger as well. We now turn our focus to the art of communication. It's a crucial aspect of our lives deeply intertwined with how we express ourselves and connect with others. The way we communicate, the clarity and ease with which we convey our thoughts and feelings can have a profound impact on our influence and relationship. Think about the last time you had a conversation that was truly impactful. Chances are, it wasn't the complexity of the words used that made it memorable, but the clarity and sincerity behind them. The most powerful communication is often the simplest. It's direct, 
honest and unambiguous, this straightforward approach to communication not only makes our message clear, but also makes it resonate with others. It creates a bridge of understanding, fostering deeper connections and mutual respect. In the world of leadership, the power of ease in communication cannot be overstated. Great leaders are often great communicators. They have the ability to articulate their vision and ideas in a way that is accessible and inspiring to all. They don't hide behind jargon or complexity. Instead, they speak in a language that is relatable and engaging. This clarity of communication is what rallies people behind a cause, what turns ideas into movements. But ease in communication is not just about speaking. It's equally about listening. To communicate effectively, we must first understand the perspectives and needs of others. Active listening, the practice of truly hearing and understanding what others are saying, is a key component of effective communication. It involves empathy, patience, and an open mind. When we listen actively, we not only gain a deeper understanding of the people we are communicating with, but we also create an environment of trust and respect. Moreover, ease in communication extends beyond our verbal interactions. In our digital age, much of our communication is done through written text, emails, messages. Here too, the principles of clarity and simplicity apply. A well-crafted email or message, clear and to the point, is far more effective than one cluttered with unnecessary details and convoluted language. In writing, as in speaking, simplicity is key to ensuring our message is understood and received as intended. However, embracing simplicity in communication is not always easy. It requires self-awareness and a willingness to strip away the superfluous. We must be mindful of our language, our tone, and our intent. We must learn to express ourselves in a way that is genuine and unassuming, yet powerful. This often means stepping out of our comfort zones, challenging our habitual ways of expressing ourselves and adopting a more mindful approach to our interaction. In doing so, we must also be aware of the diverse nature of our audience. Communication is not a one-size-fits-all endeavor. What works in one context may not work in another. Therefore, adaptability is key. We need to be able to tailor our communication style to suit different situations and audiences while still maintaining the essence of clarity and simplicity. As we refine our communication skills, we also enhance our ability to influence and inspire. Clear and simple communication is compelling. It has the power to persuade, to motivate, and to move people to action. It is a tool that can be used to bridge gaps, to resolve conflicts, and to build strong, lasting relationships. It's about conveying our message in a way that is not only heard but felt. Commit to mastering this art of easy communication. Strive to be clear and concise in our words, empathetic and attentive in our listening, and adaptable and mindful in our approach. As we do so, we will find that our ability to connect with and influence others grows exponentially. We will discover that in the simplicity of our communication lies the power to change not only our own lives, but the lives of those around us. As we traverse the path of effective communication, we arrive at a crucial intersection, the role being as in relationships and leadership. This concept of is, is not about being lenient or passive. Rather, it's about being approachable, understanding, and adaptable, qualities that are essential for building strong relationships and effective leadership. In the tapestry of human interaction, each thread, each relationship, holds its unique color and texture. Being easy in this context means being receptive to these differences, respecting them, and adapting our approach to suit the needs and sensitivities of others. It's about creating an environment where openness and trust can flourish. Consider the relationships that you cherish the most. What makes them special? Often, it's the ease of interaction, 
the comfort of being understood, and the freedom to be oneself. These relationships are marked by clear communication, mutual respect, and in a deep sense of connection. They are the relationships where we feel valued and heard, where the exchange of ideas and emotions flows freely. This ease in personal relationships doesn't just enhance our private lives. It also translates into our professional interaction. The concept of being easy takes on an added dimension. A leader who is approachable and understanding fosters a culture of trust and collaboration. Such a leader listens attentively, considers different viewpoints, and communicates decisions clearly and empathetically. This approachability doesn't diminish a leader's authority. Instead, it enhances it. People are naturally drawn to leaders who are relatable and responsive. Leaders who value their team members and treat them with respect. Moreover, being easy in leadership involves adaptability, the ability to adjust one's leadership style to suit the situation and the needs of the team. It means being flexible enough to navigate the complexities of human dynamics while staying true to one's core values and objectives. This flexibility is a strength, not a weakness. It demonstrates a deep understanding of the nuances of leadership and a commitment to the growth and well-being of the team. This concept uh, extends to the broader scope of influence as well. Influence, after all, is about more than just leading a team or an organization. It's about impacting the lives of those around us, both directly and indirectly. Being easy in our approach to influence means being accessible, relatable, and genuine. It means sharing our knowledge and experiences in a way that is helpful and inspiring without being overbearing or dogmatic. It's about guiding rather than dictating, inspiring rather than imposing, in practicing ease in our relationships and leadership. We also cultivate humility and empathy. Humility allows us to recognize that we don't have all the answers that we can learn from others, and that our way is not the only way. Empathy enables us to understand and share the feelings of others to connect with them on a deeper level. These qualities are the cornerstone of effective leadership and meaningful relationships. As we strive to be easy in our interactions, we must also be mindful of maintaining a balance. It's about being firm yet fair, assertive yet understanding. It's about setting clear boundaries while being open to new ideas and perspectives. This balance is crucial for healthy, productive relationships and for leadership that is both respected and effective. The power of being Yeezys in our relationships and leadership. Let us strive to be leaders and individuals who are approachable, adaptable, and understanding. Let us build connections that are rooted in mutual respect and empathy, and let us lead with a heart that is open and a mind that is clear. In doing so, we will not only enhance our own lives, but also positively impact the lives of those around us. We will create environments where creativity and collaboration thrive, where people feel valued and empowered this is the true essence of leadership and the foundation of strong, lasting relations. The landscape of simplicity and ease, a question naturally arises. How can we cultivate these qualities in our own lives? It's one thing to understand the importance of being easy in our relationships and leadership, but quite another to put this into practice. Let's explore some practical steps that can guide us in integrating simplicity and ease into our daily lives. The first step is mindfulness, being aware of our thoughts, actions, and interaction. Mindfulness is like a gentle light illuminating our habits and pattern. It allows us to see where our lives have become overly complex or stressful. By being mindful, we can start to identify areas where simplicity can be introduced. This could be decluttering our physical space, 
streamlining our daily routines, or even simplifying our goals and ambitions, life is a series of choices, and each choice comes with its own set of responsibilities and consequences. By prioritizing what truly matters to us, whether it's family, career, health, or personal growth, we can focus our energies more effectively. This means learning to say on to things that don't align with our priorities. It's not about rejecting opportunities, but about choosing the ones that best serve our purpose and values. Communication, as we discussed earlier, plays a key role in cultivating simplicity and ease. Adopt a straightforward and clear style of communication. This means expressing ourselves in a way that is easily understood, avoiding jargon and overcomplication. Remember, the goal is to be clear, not clever. In our interactions, whether personal or professional, strive to be concise and direct, yet empathetic and respectful. Another practical step is to embrace the concept of minimalism. This doesn't necessarily mean living with the bare minimum, but rather choosing to surround ourselves with things that add value and joy to our lives. It's about quality over quantity. In a minimalist approach, we find freedom from the unnecessary burdens of material possessions and clutter, both physical and mental. In the realm of decision-making, strive for clarity and decisiveness. Often, the stress and complexity in our lives come from indecision or from overanalyzing every option. By being clear about what we want and making decisions more swiftly, we can reduce this complexity. This doesn't mean rushing into choices without thought, but rather being more efficient in our decision-making process. Cultivate the habit of gratitude. Gratitude is a powerful tool in simplifying our perspective. It shifts our focus from what we lack to what we have. By appreciating the small joys and successes in our lives, we foster a sense of contentment and simplicity. This shift in perspective can be profoundly liberating, reducing the constant pursuit of more are and allowing us to find satisfaction in the present moment. Incorporating these steps into our lives is a journey, not a destination. It requires patience, persistence, and a willingness to continuously learn and adapt. But the rewards are significant. By embracing simplicity and ease, we open ourselves to a more peaceful, focused, and fulfilling life. We become better communicators, leaders, and influencers. We build stronger, more meaningful relationships, and we find greater clarity. As we wrap up this part of our discussion, let's carry forward these insights and practices. Strive to embody the principles of simplicity and ease, not just in theory, but in the practical, everyday moments of our lives. In doing so, we will discover that the true power of simplicity and ease lies not just in understanding them, but in living them. We meander through its myriad paths, the concept of being easy, approachable, simple and clear, emerges as a beacon of strength. This strength, often understated, is a profound force that can reshape our lives and the lives of those around us. It's a strength that doesn't roar loudly, but instead whispers wisdom into the ears of those who listen. The strength in being easy is about embracing a lifestyle that values clarity over complexity, understanding over judgment, and empathy over indifference. It's about realizing that the most powerful impact we can make often comes from our simplest actions and our most straightforward words. This approach to life is not a show of weakness, but a demonstration of profound inner fortitude and wisdom. Reflect on the greatest challenges you've faced. Often, the solutions weren't found in complex strategies or convoluted plans, but in simple, clear actions and decisions. Simplicity is the lens through which chaos is transformed into order and confusion into understanding. 
in our personal and professional lives, this principle holds true. By simplifying our approach, we gain clarity of purpose and a focused direction that guides us to our goals with greater ease and less turmoil. In our relationships, the strength of being easy is seen in the authentic connections we forge. It's in the comfort we find in being with others who understand and accept us. These relationships built on the foundation of clear and sincere communication become our support systems, our havens of peace in a bustling world. When we are easy to relate to, we open doors to deeper understanding and stronger bonds. Turning our gaze to leadership here too, the strength of being easy shines brightly. Great leaders are those who make themselves accessible, who communicate their vision with clarity, and who lead not from a distant pedestal, but from among their team. This approachability inspires trust and loyalty, fosters a collaborative environment, and drives collective success. A leader who is easy to understand and follow becomes a beacon of inspiration, guiding others through the fog of uncertainty and complexity. But perhaps the most profound aspect of being easy is its impact on our inner selves. It's about finding tranquility in a world that often values turbulence. It's about recognizing that in simplicity lies the path to true contentment and fulfillment. When we simplify our lives, we remove the unnecessary burdens that weigh us down, making room for growth, creativity, and peace. In adopting this principle, we must be mindful of the balance it requires. Being easy is not about avoiding challenges or shirking responsibilities. It's about approaching these challenges with a mindset that seeks solutions in simplicity that values clear thought, and that prioritizes understanding and empathy. It's about facing life with a calm demeanor, a focused mind, and an open heart. As we conclude our exploration, take these insights and weave them into the fabric of our daily lives. Let's remember that the strength in being easy is a quiet power that can move mountains. It's a power that can change hearts, open minds, and create a ripple effect of positivity and transformation. So, as we step forward into the days ahead, carry with us the lessons of simplicity, clarity, and ease. Approach each new day with the understanding that our greatest strength lies in our ability to be clear, approachable, and uncomplicated. In doing so, we will not only enrich our own lives, but also touch the lives of those around us in profound and lasting ways. In this world where complexity often reigns, be the harbingers of simplicity. Show that in being easy in our thoughts, our words and our actions lies a power unmatched, the power to bring clarity in confusion, peace in turmoil, and light in darkness. With this power in our hearts and minds, let us stride forward, ready to make a meaningful impact in our world. One simple, clear, and easy step at a time. Hi, everybody. Let's embark on a journey of self-discovery and empowerment. Imagine a world where your every gesture, every word, and every action is laced with the purest intention of kindness. Now picture this kindness being your shield and your sword as you navigate the maze of life. It sounds ideal, doesn't it? But let's pause and reflect. Is being excessively nice, always bending over backwards, always the first to step back, actually serving us well? Or is it, in some mysterious way, leading us down a path where our voice loses its strength, our presence loses its impact? You see, there's a delicate dance between kindness and assertiveness, between being nice and commanding respect. It's like walking a tightrope. Lean too much on one side and you lose balance. Now, I'm not here to tell you to abandon kindness. No, kindness is a virtue that makes the fabric of our society richer and more humane. But there's a critical aspect we often overlook, the power of respect. 
the strength that comes from not just being seen as nice, but also being recognized as someone of substance, someone whose words carry weight, whose decisions are valued, whose presence is acknowledged. Let me share a story with you. There was once a person, let's call them Alex. Alex was the epitome of niceness, always there to lend a hand, never saying no, a truly selfless soul. But over time, Alex began to feel invisible, like a shadow in the lives of others. People came to expect, even take for granted, Alex's unwavering kindness, Alex's voice, once vibrant and full of ideas, became a mere whisper in meetings and gatherings. This is where our journey begins, a journey from the shadows into the light, from being a whisper to being a voice that echoes with respect and presence. As we delve into this voyage, remember it's not about discarding your kindness. It's about enriching it with the power of respect. It's about understanding that respect doesn't diminish kindness. It elevates it. It's about realizing that when you stand up for yourself, when you draw boundaries, when you speak with conviction, you're not being any less kind. And in that self-kindness, you find the strength to be genuinely kind to others. Not out of obligation, but out of a sense of balanced mutual respect. So let's set forward on this path of transformation. It's a path that may challenge your beliefs, push you out of your comfort zone, and ask you to look within with a brave, honest eye. But remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And today, we take that step together. Let's explore how to harmoniously blend being nice with gaining the respect you rightfully deserve, creating a life where kindness and strength coexist, complementing each other beautifully. In our quest to blend niceness with respect, let's first navigate the often overlooked pitfalls of being overly nice. It's like planting a garden. You see, a gardener doesn't just care for the plants with water and sunlight. They also need to be aware of the weeds that can overrun the garden if left unchecked. Similarly, in the garden of our lives, being overly nice can be the weed. Though seemingly harmless, can gradually take over, choking our potential and diminishing our presence. The first pitfall is the loss of personal boundaries. Imagine you're a ship sailing on the vast ocean of life. Boundaries are your compass, your map. They guide you, keep you on course. But when you're overly nice, constantly accommodating others, you toss this compass overboard. Uh, Drift aimlessly at the mercy of others' needs and wants. Your time, your energy, your very sense of self become public property, open for others to use as they please. It's a dangerous precedent setting you up for a journey where you're no longer the captain of your ship. Now think about respect. Respect is like a two-way street. It's given and received. But when you're overly accommodating, always putting others first, you inadvertently direct all traffic one way. People may like you, sure, but liking is fleeting. Respect, however, is enduring. It's built on the foundation of mutual give and take. When you're always giving and never setting terms, you're essentially putting up a sign that says, my needs, my values, my time aren't important. And unfortunately, people tend to take these signs at face value. Moreover, being overly nice can lead to a loss of authenticity. There is a saying, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. But when you're overly nice, you're not being yourself. You're playing a role wearing a mask. And what happens when you wear a mask for too long? You forget the face beneath it. Your true thoughts, feelings, and desires get buried under layers of agreeableness. And in this burial, you lose the essence of what makes you Authenticity is the cornerstone of genuine relationships, both personal and professional. Without it, relationships are built on shaky ground, vulnerable to the slightest tremor of conflict or disagreement. Let's not forget the impact on self-esteem and confidence. Continually bending to others will always being the IE's person eats away at your self-esteem. It's like a slow leak in a tire. You might not notice it at first, but gradually the tire deflates 
and you find yourself stranded on the roadside, unable to move forward. Your opinions start to feel less important, your decisions less confident. You become a spectator in your own life, watching as others take the lead. This erosion of self-esteem is subtle, but its effects are profound. Lastly, consider the impact of being overly nice on your ability to lead and influence. Leadership is about vision, direction, and the courage to make tough decisions. It requires a spine of steel, not a backbone of straw. When you're overly nice, always agreeing, never rocking the boat, you lose the respect that's essential for leadership. People follow those who stand for something, who have clear boundaries and a strong sense of self. They seek leaders who can say, now with as much conviction as they say, yeah. as we journey further, let's delve into the heart of our quest, understanding respect. Respect is like the sun in our lives. It illuminates our path, warms our existence, and gives us the energy to grow. But to bask in its glow, we must first comprehend its true nature. Respect is often mistaken as a mere response to authority or power. But in its purest form, respect is about recognition, recognition of a person's worth, their values, their boundaries, and their uniqueness. It's a silent nod to someone's inherent dignity, irrespective of their status or position. When we talk about gaining respect, it's not about instilling fear or demanding obedience. It's about earning this recognition through our actions, our words, and most importantly, our authenticity. Consider the respect you have for a mountain standing tall, unshaken by the elements. This respect comes not from the mountain demanding it, but from its sheer presence, its unwavering stance. Similarly, when you stand firm in your beliefs, when you are true to your values, and when you honor your commitments, you become like the mountain. You command respect not by force, but through the quiet power of your presence. In the realm of personal and professional relationships, respect is the currency that enriches interactions. It's about listening as much as it's about being heard. It's about valuing others' perspectives, even when they differ from your own. This kind of respect fosters an environment of trust and openness, where ideas can flourish and collaborations can thrive. Remember, a tree doesn't grow tall in isolation. It thrives in an ecosystem that respects its space and contributes to its nourishment. But before seeking respect from others, one must embark on the most crucial journey, gaining self-respect. Self-respect is the seed from which the tree of external respect grows. It's about recognizing your own worth, setting and maintaining your boundaries, and treating yourself with the same kindness and understanding you offer others. When you respect yourself, you set the standard for how others should treat you. It's like setting the rules of the game. We're the main rule. Is I am worthy of respect, and I will not accept less. Building self-respect is not an overnight journey. It requires introspection, a willingness to confront your own weaknesses, and the courage to work on them. It's about taking responsibility for your actions, celebrating your strengths. As you cultivate self-respect, you'll notice a profound change. Your choices become more deliberate, your actions more confident, and your voice carries a weight that resonates with others. So as we move forward, let's carry with us this understanding of respect. It's a beacon that guides us towards meaningful interactions, fulfilling relationships, and a profound sense of self-worth. In the next segment of our journey, we will explore practical strategies to gain respect. These are tools and techniques that you can apply in your daily life, transforming the way you interact with the world, and more importantly, the way the world interacts with you. Now, let's turn our attention to the practical strategies the tangible steps you can take to gain respect. This part of our journey is about transforming understanding into action, theory into practice. It's about equipping yourself with the tools, not just to navigate the world, but to chart a course that others admire and follow. 
The first and perhaps most crucial strategy is setting clear boundaries. Boundaries are like the walls of a fortress. They protect your values, your time, and your energy. But setting boundaries is more art than science. It's not about building impenetrable walls, but rather about defining your space respectfully and assertively. This means learning to say, ah, oh, when necessary, without fear or guilt. It's about communicating your limits clearly and calmly and standing firm in them, even when challenged. Remember, every time you uphold your boundaries, you send a message, a message that says, I respect myself and I expect the same from you. Next, let's talk about the power of assertive communication. Assertiveness is not aggression. It's the golden mean between passivity and aggression. It's expressing your thoughts, feelings, and needs directly and respectfully to communicate assertively. Practice being clear and concise in your speech. Avoid hedging your words with qualifiers like maybe or I think. Instead, own your words. And speak with confidence, but also with empathy. Understanding that assertiveness is not about overpowering others, but about creating a space where everyone's voice is heard and respected. Another key strategy is developing self-confidence. Confidence is like a muscle. It strengthens with use. Start by focusing on your accomplishments, no matter how small. Celebrate them, let them be the fuel that powers your self-belief. Engage in activities that challenge you, that push you out of your comfort zone. Every challenge you overcome is a brick added to the foundation of your confidence. And as your confidence grows, so does the respect you command. People are naturally drawn to confidence. It's like a beacon that signals capability, reliability, and strength. In addition to these strategies, it's crucial to cultivate integrity and consistency in your actions. Respect is earned by those who walk their talk who align their actions with their words. Maybe someone who follows through on commitments, who stands by their principles, even when it's inconvenient or challenging. This consistency in character and action builds trust, and trust is the bedrock of respect. People respect those they can rely on, those who are the same today as they will be tomorrow. Lastly, foster a sense of empathy and understanding your interactions. Respect is a two-way street. To gain it, you must also give it. Show genuine interest in others. Listen to their viewpoints and try to understand their perspectives. Empathy doesn't mean agreeing with everyone. It means acknowledging their humanity, their right to have an opinion, and their inherent worth. When you treat others with empathy and understanding, you create an environment of mutual respect where people feel valued and heard. In essence, gaining respect is about striking a balance, a balance between self-respect and empathy, between assertiveness and understanding. It's about embodying the qualities you seek in others. As we wrap up this part of our journey, remember that these strategies are not just tools for gaining respect. They are stepping stones to a more fulfilling, empowered life. In our next segment, we will explore how to balance being nice with assertiveness, weaving together the threads of kindness and strength into a tapestry that is both beautiful and resilient. As we continue on our path, let's explore the intricate dance of balancing niceness with assertiveness. This balance is not just a skill, but an art. The art of harmonizing the softness of kindness with the strength of self-respect. It's about finding that sweet spot where you can be both compassionate and firm, empathetic and assertive. The journey to this balance starts with understanding that niceness and assertiveness are not mutually exclusive. Think of it like a tree. Its roots grounded firmly, yet its branches and leaves sway gently in the breeze. The roots represent your assertiveness your values, your boundaries, your self-respect. The branches and leaves are your niceness, your empathy, your compassion, your willingness to bend and adapt. To be truly effective, both must coexist in harmony. 
One of the key aspects of balancing these traits is self-awareness. It requires a deep understanding of your own emotions and triggers. When are you likely to compromise too much? When do you find it hard to stand up for yourself? Reflecting on these questions helps you identify situations where you need to lean more into your assertiveness. Conversely, it also allows you to recognize when a softer, more empathetic approach is needed. It's about knowing when to stand firm and when to yield, much like a wise captain who knows when to set sail and when to drop anchor. Communication is another vital tool in this balance. The way you communicate can bridge the gap between assertiveness and niceness. It's about the language you choose, the tone you adopt, and the body language you exhibit. Assertive communication involves being clear and direct, but also respectful and kind. It's about saying what you mean without being mean. Remember, you can deliver a firm message without losing your temper or your compassion. It's like adding a spoonful of sugar to medicine. Doesn't change the medicine's effectiveness, but it makes it easier to swallow. Empathy plays a crucial role in this balance. It allows you to understand and appreciate others' perspectives, even when asserting your boundaries. Empathy is not about giving in or giving up. It's about creating a connection that fosters mutual understanding and respect. It's about validating others' feelings without invalidating your own. This empathetic approach builds bridges. It shows that you care, not just about the outcome, but about the people involved. Practicing mindfulness and emotional intelligence is also crucial. These skills help you respond, not react. In situations where your niceness is taken for granted or your assertiveness is mistaken for aggression, mindfulness helps you remain calm and focused. It allows you to choose your response rather than being swept away by emotional impulses. This way, your actions are deliberate and aligned with your true intentions. And finally, it's important to cultivate a mindset of growth and flexibility. Balancing niceness with assertiveness is not a one-time achievement. It's a continuous process of learning and adapting. Every interaction is an opportunity to practice this balance, to learn from your successes and your mistakes. It's about growing into a person who can confidently navigate the complexities of human interactions with grace and strength. As we near the end of this part of our journey, remember that the balance between niceness and assertiveness is not just about external interactions. It's about internal harmony. It's about respecting yourself enough to assert your needs and respecting others enough to acknowledge theirs. In the next and final segment of our journey, we will wrap up our learnings and look at how to embrace this journey of transformation, bringing together all the strands of our discussion into a cohesive, empowering whole. As we draw our journey to a close, let's take a moment to reflect on the path we've traversed. We embarked on this voyage with a simple yet profound goal, to find the balance between being nice and gaining respect. It's a journey not just of self-improvement, but of self-discovery, a journey where each step is as important as the destination. Embracing this journey means acknowledging that the quest for balance is an ongoing process. It's a path lined with both triumphs and challenges, with lessons learned in each encounter and each reflection. Remember, transformation is not an event. It's a continuous evolution. Each day presents a new opportunity to practice the art of balancing niceness with assertiveness, to refine your approach, and to grow a little more into the person you aspire to be. As you move forward, carry with you the insights and strategies we've discussed. Hold on to the importance of setting boundaries, of being assertive without losing your empathy. Cherish the value of self-respect and the respect for others. Remember the power of your words and actions and the impact they have not just on those around you, but on your perception of yourself. Think of this journey like cultivating a garden. It requires patience, care, and regular attention. There will be days when the weeds seem to grow back, 
when the balance feels off, but don't be disheartened. Gardening, much like personal growth, is not a task, but a process. It's about nurturing, adjusting, and learning as you go. With each day, your garden will flourish, reflecting the care and thought you've put into it. And as you continue on your path, remember to celebrate your progress. Each step you take towards balancing niceness with assertiveness is an achievement. Acknowledge your efforts, no matter how small they may seem. These small victories are the milestones that mark your journey, each one a testament to your commitment to growth and self-improvement. In conclusion, the journey to balance, being nice and gaining respect, is not just about changing how others perceive you. It's about changing how you perceive yourself. It's about building a life where you can be kind without being taken for granted, assertive without being harsh. A life where your kindness is a choice, not an obligation, and your assertiveness is a sign of strength, not aggression. So as we part ways on this journey, Take with you not just the lessons learned, but the spirit of discovery and the willingness to grow. Embrace the journey with an open heart and a resilient mind. Remember, the path to balance is not a straight line, but a winding road full of surprises and insights. Walk this road with courage, with confidence, and most importantly, with respect for yourself and others. And in this walk, you will find not just respect, but a profound sense of fulfillment and purpose. Thank you for sharing this journey with me. Go forth and be the architect of your own life, a life that resonates with respect, kindness, and strength. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm thrilled to stand here today, sharing with you insights on a subject that's close to my heart, and I believe crucial to our collective journey towards success and fulfillment. Today, let's explore together the profound significance and the unyielding truth about a resource that is universally bestowed yet often squandered. I am talking about the irreplaceable, invaluable currency of our lives, that is time. Imagine the scenario. Every morning you receive a bank deposit of 86,400 seconds. There's no saving it. The time bank doesn't allow it. Each night it writes off whatever portion you failed to invest wisely. It carries no balance over. It allows no overdrafts. Every day it opens a new account for you. If you fail to use the day's deposits, it's your loss and you can't get it back. There's no drawing against the tomorrow. You must live in the present on today's deposits. Invest it wisely to get from it the utmost in health, happiness, and success. You see, time, much like money, is a commodity. However, it's a more precious commodity than money. It's a finite resource. Once spent, it can never be reclaimed. Every moment that passes is a moment loss, a missed opportunity to make a change, to make a difference, to grow, to thrive. I recall a tale as old as time, yet as fresh as if it were told just yesterday. It's about a young man full of vigor and ambition, always looking ahead, always gazing towards the horizon. Never his feet, never the path he tread on. One day, an old wise man handed him a beautiful hourglass filled with golden sand and said, This represents your life. Watch as the grains fall one by one and remember, once the grain falls, it can never rise again. Make each grain count. The young man, initially dismissive, soon realized the profound truth in the wise man's words. Each falling grain of sand was a symbol a reminder of life slipping away moment by moment. This story brings to light a simple yet often overlooked truth. Time is a finite resource. A series of moments that once gone are gone forever. The question that stands before us is not how much time we have, but how we choose to use that time. Are we letting it slip away like grains of sand in an hourglass, or are we making every grain every moment count. In our journey today, we'll delve into the importance of time, the pitfalls of squandering it, and the art of harnessing it effectively. It's about understanding that time, unlike money, is a resource that, once gone, leaves us with nothing but memories and perhaps regrets. 
So, as we stand at the crossroads of decision and action, let's choose to take the path less traveled, the path of wisdom, the path of utilizing time effectively. Let's not just pass time, but let's make time serve us in our quest for a life of achievement, fulfillment, and purpose. And now, let us venture into the illusion of unlimited time, unraveling the myth that leads so many astray and discovering how to truly value each ticking second. Let's embark on this journey together, for time waits for no one, and every moment is a step towards our destiny. In our quest to understand and respect the value of time, we encounter a common yet perilous illusion, the belief in the abundance of time. This illusion seduces us into thinking that there is always more time, a tomorrow as plentiful as today, waiting with open arms. However, this is a mirage that often leads us down a path of procrastination and complacency. Consider this. How many times have we said, I'll do it tomorrow? Or there's always next time. These phrases are the siren songs of wasted opportunity. They lull us into a false sense of security, blinding us to the relentless march of time. The truth is, tomorrow is not promised to anyone. We live in the now, not in the uncertain future. The danger of believing in unlimited time is that it breeds procrastination. Procrastination, the thief of time, tempts us to postpone necessary actions and decisions. It whispers in our ears that there's plenty of time to start that project, to take that step, to make that change. But as the days turn into weeks, and weeks into months, we find ourselves in the same place. Our goals and dreams gathering dust on the shelf of some day. This belief also fosters complacency. When we think we have an endless supply of time, we lose the urgency to grow, to improve, to advance. We become content with the status quo, forgetting that life is a journey of constant learning and self-improvement. Complacency is a silent killer of ambition, a slow poison that numbs the drive to reach higher and achieve more. Remember, time is like a river. It flows ceaselessly, and once it passes, it never returns. Each moment is unique, never to be repeated. As the old saying goes, you cannot step into the same river twice. The water that has flowed past will never flow again. So too with time. Every moment is a chance to do something remarkable, something that will echo in the corridors of your future. In this journey of life, we must guard against the seduction of thinking we have more time than we do. We must awaken to the reality that our time is finite. Every day is a fresh canvas, but it's a canvas that fades with the setting sun. We must paint our masterpiece now, not later. As we continue our exploration, let's challenge ourselves to cast aside the veil of this illusion. Let's embrace the urgency of now, recognizing that in the grand clock of the universe, our time is but a brief tick. In the words to come, we will delve deeper into the consequences of wasting time, understanding that with each moment lost, a piece of our potential fades away. Let us move forward with the resolve to treat each day as the precious gift it is, using it to craft a life of purpose, meaning, and fulfillment. Now let us turn our gaze to a more sobering aspect of our discourse, the consequence of wasting time. This is not just about what we lose when we let time slip through our fingers, but about the opportunities we miss, the joys we never experience, and the heights we fail to reach. In my travels and talks, I've encountered many who lament, if only I had started earlier. This phrase echoes the regrets of countless souls who realize too late that the richness of life is found in action, not in action. The price of squandering time is not just measured in moments lost, but in dreams deferred, opportunities missed, and potentials unrealized. Consider the story of a young man, full of potential, gifted in many ways. Yet, he lived as if his reservoir of time was limitless. He dreamed of starting his own business, of traveling the world, of writing a book. But he always said, I'll start tomorrow. He waited for the perfect moment, the perfect conditions. Years rolled by, and the young man found himself older, his dream still just dreams, his book unwritten, his business idea now a common reality in the hands of someone who sees the day. 
This tale is not unique. It's a common story, a human story, repeated in different shades across the globe. The consequence of wasting time is not merely a delay in progress. It is often the death of what could have been. Each moment we let slip by in procrastination, in waiting for the perfect moment, is a step away from our potential. Think of the moments in history where a delay, a moment of hesitation, changed the course of events. Opportunities in business and innovation, lost because someone waited too long, doubted too long. Relationships never formed or broken because the right words were never spoken at the right time. Life, in all its complexity, is unforgiving of time wasted. The impact of not valuing time extends beyond personal regret. It influences those around us, our families, our communities, and our world. When we fail to use our time effectively, we also fail to contribute to add value, to inspire, and to lead. The cumulative effect of time wasted by many can lead to a society that's less than what it could be, a collective narrative marred by what-ifs and if-onlys. However, in end understanding the negative impacts of wasting time, we find a compelling motivation to change. Recognizing the gravity of lost time can be the catalyst for transformation. It's a wake-up call. A call to action, a call to live each day with purpose and passion. As we continue on our journey, let us bear in mind the heavy cost of wasting time. Let us remember the stories of opportunities lost and dreams unfulfilled. But let us also look forward with determination, knowing that while the past is set in stone, the future is ours to shape. As we have ventured through the terrain of time's importance and the pitfalls of squandering it, let us now turn to a more inspiring chapter, a chapter that speaks of hope and possibility. This is about the power of a moment and the art of making every second count. The philosopher Seneca once said, it is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. The truth in these words is profound and timeless. Each moment holds within it an opportunity for change, for action, for decision-making that can alter the course of our lives. But how often do we recognize and seize these moments? To understand the power of a moment, let's consider the story of a woman who had a dream to be an artist. Each day, she told herself she'd start painting tomorrow. Days turned into months and months into years. It wasn't until one day she witnessed a street artist, young and carefree, passionately painting. That moment struck her deeply. It was a simple moment, yet it sparked something in her. She went home, took out her long stored brushes and canvases, and began to paint. That moment, that encounter changed her life. Her art didn't just bring her joy. It brought joy to others and success she'd never imagined. This story illustrates that within the fabric of our everyday lives, there are moments woven with the potential to change our destiny. These moments are the seeds of new beginnings, of dreams realized, of goals achieved. But they require action. They require that we seize them before they slip away into the ocean of time. Think of a moment as a gateway, a doorway that opens briefly and can lead to paths untraveled. It's in these brief seconds, these fleeting instances, that decisions are made which can lead to growth and remarkable change. A decision to speak up in a meeting, leading to a new opportunity. A decision to help someone in need, leading to a lifelong friendship. A decision to take a chance on a new venture, leading to unprecedented success. Each second is packed with potential, waiting to be unleashed. However, the power of a moment is not just about seizing opportunities. It's also about making each second count. It's about living each moment to its fullest, being present, engaged, and conscious of the here and now. In our fast-paced world, where multitasking and constant busyness are the norms, we often forget to live in the moment, to savor the present, to cherish the now. But it is in these moments that life truly happens, Living in the moment also means being mindful of our actions and choices. It's about making conscious decisions that align with our goals and values. 
Rather than moving on autopilot, when we are mindful, we make decisions that are deliberate and thoughtful, leading to more fulfilling outcomes. As we move forward, let's carry with us the understanding that each moment is a precious gift. Let's vow to treat each second as an opportunity to make a difference, to make a change, to move closer to our goals. The power of a moment lies in its fleeting nature and its immense potential. It's up to us to harness this power to make every second count. In our journey of understanding time, we have observed its value and the consequence of squandering it. Now let us turn our attention to a vital philosophy, transforming time into treasure through the mastery of time management. This is not just about managing our days. It's about enriching our lives. Time management, in essence, is the art of organizing and planning how to divide your time between various activities. It's about making every moment count, ensuring that every second spent is a step towards a greater goal. The key to effective time management lies not in working harder, but in working smarter. Let's begin with the first principle, prioritization. Imagine your life as a jar and each task and goal as rocks, pebbles and sand. If you start by filling the jar with sand, there will be no room for rocks or pebbles. This jar is your day and the rocks are your most important tasks. Start with them and let the pebbles, the less critical tasks, fill in the gaps followed by the sand, the small mundane tasks. If you prioritize the rocks, you ensure that the most important things always get done. This analogy brings us to the concept of Ig rocks. These are your key priorities, the tasks that have the most significant impact on your life and goals. They could be your career goals, personal development, health. Every day, identify these big rocks and tackle them first. By focusing on these crucial tasks, you ensure that the most important aspects of your life are given the attention they deserve. Another vital aspect of time management is the art of saying no. Time is a finite resource, and every time you say yes to one thing, you're saying not to another. Learn to say only tasks and activities that do not align with your goals or add value to your life. It's not about being unkind or selfish. It's about being intentional with your time. Let's also talk about the power of goal setting. Goals give direction to how we use our time. Without clear goals, it's easy to drift aimlessly, wasting time on activities that don't bring us closer to where we want to be. Set clear, specific, and achievable goals and break them down into actionable steps. This way, you can measure progress and stay motivated. Effective time management also involves organizing your day. Use tools like calendars, planners, or digital apps to schedule your tasks. Allocate specific time slots for each activity and stick to them. This not only ensures that you're focused on the task at hand, but also helps avoid the trap of multitasking, which, contrary to popular belief, diminishes efficiency and quality. Remember, self-discipline is the cornerstone of good time management. Discipline is choosing what you want most over what you want now. It's about making choices that may not be pleasant in the short term, but will lead to long-term benefits. Incorporate time for rest and relaxation in your schedule. Time management is not about packing every moment with work. It's about finding a balance. Rest is not a waste of time. It's a vital element in ensuring sustained productivity and creativity. Turning time into treasure is about making conscious choices. It's about prioritizing tasks that align with your goals, using tools to organize your day, practicing self-discipline, finding balance, and being adaptable. As we delve deeper into the art of time management, we arrive at a crucial element that acts as the backbone of all success and achievement, the discipline of time. Discipline, in its essence, is the bridge between goals and accomplishment, and when applied to time management, it becomes the architect of a lifetime of achievements. Discipline and time management is not about rigid schedules or inflexible routines. It's about creating a structure that allows you to harness your full potential. 
It's about making conscious choices and sticking to them, even when it's tempting to stray. Discipline is the force that helps you stay on course, guiding you steadily towards your goals and aspirations. They think discipline is the guardian of your time. Every day, countless distractions vie for your attention. And it's discipline that empowers you to say no to the trivial and yes to the essential. This selective focus is not a trait of the gifted few. It's a skill that can be developed and honed. It's about consistently choosing activities that align with your goals and values over those that offer immediate but fleeting gratification. Consider a simple practical example, waking up early. This act of discipline provides you with a quiet, uninterrupted time to focus on your priorities, be it exercise, planning your day, or working on a personal project. It's a small decision that over time yields significant results. Each morning that you choose to rise early, you're reinforcing a pattern of discipline, creating a foundation for a productive day. Discipline time management also involves setting and respecting deadlines. Deadlines are not just external pressures. They're commitments we make to ourselves and others. Meeting these deadlines is a testament to your discipline and reliability. It's a clear message that you value your time and respect the time of others. Discipline in meeting deadlines transforms your aspirations from abstract ideas into concrete achievements. The beauty of discipline in time management is that it leads not only to success, but also to fulfillment. It brings a sense of control and purpose to your life. When you manage your time well, you're less stressed, more productive, and more confident in your abilities. You're able to allocate time for your work, your passions, your relationships, and your personal growth. This balance is the key to a fulfilling life. Discipline also fosters self-trust. When you consistently meet your commitments, you build confidence in your ability to face challenges and overcome obstacles. This self-trust is the foundation upon which you can build a life of achievement and satisfaction. Furthermore, discipline time management is contagious. When you exhibit discipline in your life, it inspires those around you. Whether it's in your professional environment or in your personal life, your commitment to managing your time effectively can motivate others to do the same. In our continuous endeavor to master the art of time management, it's essential to strike a harmonious balance between learning from the past, acting in the present, and planning for the future. This triad forms the cornerstone of a life well lived, where time is not just spent, but invested wisely. Learning from the past is the first step in this trinity. The past, with all its triumphs and failures, is a rich repository of lessons. However, the key is to use these lessons wisely. It's easy to fall into the trap of living in the past, either glorifying the good old days or being shackled by the chains of past mistakes. Remember, the past is a place of reference not a place of residence. We must learn from our experiences, but we should not let them define or confine us. Instead, let these lessons be the guiding light for future endeavors, illuminating the path to avoid previous missteps and to replicate past successes. Acting in the present is where the power lies. The present is the only time frame where we have the power to act, to change, and to shape our destiny it's the moment where we can apply the lessons learned from the past to create a better now. Often we hear people saying, I'll do it someday. But remember, someday is not a day of the week. Action is what differentiates a dream from a goal. The present moment is where dreams take flight through action. It's essential to be fully engaged in the present to give our best to the current task, to the current moment. This focus is what transforms ordinary into extraordinary. However, while being anchored in the present, one must not lose sight of the future. Planning for the future is an act of optimism and vision. It's about setting goals and charting a course to achieve them. It involves anticipating challenges and preparing to overcome them. However, just as dwelling in the past can be a hindrance, so can being excessively fixated on the future. Daydreaming about the future at the expense of the present is like trying to harvest where you haven't planted. 
The future is created by a series of present moments, well lived and well used. Balancing these three aspects, learning from the past, acting in the present, and planning for the future is like walking a tightrope. Lean too much on one side and you lose your balance. The past should inform and inspire the present actions, which in turn shape the future. This balance is not achieved by chance, but by conscious choice and practice. In essence, time management is not just about schedules and deadlines. It's about managing your life. It's about integrating the wisdom of the past, the responsibility of the present, and the vision for the future into a coherent strategy for life. This integration ensures that you're not just passing through life, but growing through life. As we move forward, let us embrace this balanced approach to time management. Let's learn to learn without regret, live without delay, and plan without fear. This balance is the key to not just managing time, but mastering life. As we journey through the realms of time management, it becomes crucial to bring these concepts into the realm of our daily lives. Time management should not be an abstract art practiced only in the echelons of high theory. Instead, it must be a concrete, integral part of our everyday routine, as natural as breathing and as essential as the air we breathe. To begin integrating effective time management into our daily lives, we start with the ritual of planning. Each day should commence not with a leap into the chaos of tasks, but with a deliberate, thoughtful planning session. Take a few moments each morning to outline your day. What are your big rocks? Those crucial tasks that must be accomplished to make this day a success. By identifying these priorities first thing in the morning, you set the tone and direction for your day. Next, embrace the art of delegation. No man or woman is an island, and trying to accomplish everything alone is a recipe for burnout. Look at your to-do list critically and ask yourself, what tasks can only be done by me? What can I delegate to others? Delegation is not a sign of weakness, but of intelligent efficiency. It frees up your time to focus on those tasks that truly require your unique skills and talent. Another key step in integrating time management into daily life is to set specific, measurable goals for each day, week, and month. These goals should be realistic and achievable, providing a clear target to aim for. Breaking down larger goals into smaller daily tasks makes them more manageable and less daunting, creating a sense of achievement as each task is accomplished. Incorporating time management into daily life also means being adaptable. While it's important to have a plan, life is unpredictable and flexibility is essential. When unexpected events occur, be ready to adjust your plan. The ability to adapt without losing focus on your priorities is a critical skill in effective time management. Furthermore, eliminate time wasters. Be mindful of activities that don't add value to your life or align with your goals. This could mean reducing time spent on social media, avoiding unnecessary meetings, or saying no to tasks that don't fit with your priority. Time is a precious resource. Use it wisely. In addition, it's crucial to integrate regular breaks into your routine. No one can work continuously without a decrease in efficiency and quality. These breaks are not a waste of time. They are essential for maintaining long-term productivity and creativity. A short walk, a moment of meditation, or just stepping away from your desk can rejuvenate your mind. Now let's take a moment to reflect on the journey we've embarked upon, the wisdom we've gathered, and the legacy we wish to create with the time we have. Time management, as we've explored, is not merely a series of techniques. It's a philosophy of life, a way to harness our most finite resource, time, and turn it into a treasure trove of achievements, experiences, and fulfillment. We began by understanding the value of time, recognizing it as the most precious resource we have. We delved into the illusion of unlimited time, uncovering the perils of procrastination and complacency. We learned about the consequences of wasting time, missed opportunities, and unfulfilled potentials. Then, we discovered the power of a moment, realizing that every second counts 
and holds the potential for change and growth. We navigated the philosophy of turning time into treasure, understanding that effective time management is about prioritization, delegation, setting achievable goals, and being adaptable. We explored the discipline of time, learning that structure and focus are essential to making the most of our days. We also learned to balance the lessons of the past, the actions of the present, and the plans for the future, ensuring we live a life that's rich in both experience and accomplishment. As we integrate these principles into our daily lives, we understand that time management is not a task, but a lifestyle. It's about making conscious choices every day, aligning our actions with our goals, and living each moment to its fullest potential. And now as we stand at the precipice of the future, the question remains, how will you spend your time? Will you let it slip through your fingers like grains of sand? Or will you seize it, mold it, and craft a legacy that stands the test of time? Remember, the clock is ticking, not as a harbinger of doom, but as a clarion call to action. Every tick is a new opportunity, a new possibility, a chance to write your story, to create your legacy. Let us step forward from this moment with a renewed sense of purpose, a heightened awareness of the value of every moment, and a steadfast commitment to making every second count. Let your legacy be one of time well spent, a life well lived, and a world bettered by your presence in it. The time is now, and it's yours. Make it count.